welcome to episode 221 of the Awesome Comics Podcast, a place where the small press makes one hell of a big noise. I'm Vince Hunt, creator of The Red Mask of Mars, and joining me this week are the creator of Vanguard, Dan Butcher. Hello. And if we are the B and the L, he's most definitely the T, it's Mr. Tony Esmond. Hello. (laughs) You got a bit saucy before we came on. Yes, it's been crazy, and it's partly because of our guest this week. Yes, this yeah, week... she started it. Yeah, we are joined by artist friend and long overdue guest to this show. Yeah. It's everyone's favourite, Sarah Harris. Hello. Hello. Hello, Sarah. You're right, Good. Sarah. Fin- we'd say finally have you on. We had you on for a little two-minute interview before, didn't we? But uh, this is like the proper episode. Yeah, I, I, you, it, I can't remember where you talked to me, but yes, you did. It was at, your, <laughs> it was at Swindon. It was at the event you ran in Swindon. I did that, was it, it. Oh, yeah. that was it. Oh, yeah. That was it. That ah. was it. Ah, see, and this has been long overdue. She, she, she used to tell us, "Oh, I can't be on the show. I can't be, on, you know, podcast. I'll be so nervous." And then we turn around, and she appeared on Gareth Hopkins, uh, yes, <laughs> Alpha Pod show. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and broke our hearts. But she's making yeah. up for it now by joining us this week. <laughs> Especially Sorry. now that you know she's she's lost the excuse of, "Oh, I don't make comics." Well, you yeah. do now. Yes, <laughs> I did. But I'm retired. Oh, no, you're not. No. <laughs> You've agreed to do another one with me, and you know that for a fact. That's a verbally binding yeah, agreement, I, Sarah Harris. I said, what, yeah. One page. One page. I said I'd do. Yeah. yeah, good. Sarah made a, a figure of one of my uh, characters out of Vanguard. Oh, yeah. Nice we forget. Yeah. That was fantastic. Uh, I couldn't believe when that mask. turned up. Yeah, 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 we've got yeah. a Funko of the, red, of the red mask. Basically, Sarah's one of the nicest people in, in comics, just full stop. Yeah. What are you so, doing on here? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You you bullied me until I said yes. Yeah, this yeah. is the story for those who want to know. We said I said to Vince, why don't we get Sarah on? And he went, oh, I don't know. She wants like a month's prep time or something. I said like so. I, I said I'll I sort didn't it. Say so it like I, that. I was, <laughs> really, I was emoting. So I, I texted Sarah saying, oh, by the way, you're on on Sunday. And then you just texted me with loads of text messages, just kept saying panic on them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, all of our guests panic, don't they? Before they yeah come on and yeah. they ease into oh. it. Yeah. I'm glad it's not just me. No, no, I was gonna, no, no, no. I was going to go out and get some beer so that I could be relaxed, but I thought if I if if I do that because I have no tolerance to alcohol whatsoever, I'll just be even worse. So I I didn't. I'm drinking. So you're just squat. on ketamine. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, yeah. You're just drinking my natu- right now, Vince. My natural. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vince, you're having a drink, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm a bit worried about tonight if you're drinking. Why? I don't. You when I say I drink, I'm not drinking heavily. You said you had a bottle of Jack Daniels in front of you. No, I finished that five five minutes yeah. ago. <laughs> uh, yes. Do you know that acting acting drunk is the hardest acting you can do because it's quite a difficult thing to do. Is it really? You, yeah. You can usually always tell when someone's faking it. Yeah, you can, can't you? Mm. Really? Oh mm. well, we'll test that out probably at Thought Bubble. <laughs> anyway, yes, Sarah's joining us for the whole show this week, um, and. She's listened to the show long enough to know that it's A, unprofessional, two, we don't know what we're talking about, and three, we're going to have some recommends at the end of the show, and uh, yeah. we've already got some nice ones lined up. Prepared. I don't uh, know if you guys remember this, but we first knew Sarah, as she, she used to write us, we, we were a bit frightened of Sarah for a while, wasn't it? that's true lads, wasn't it? She used to no. write us, uh, I was, she used to write us critiques of each episode, do you remember? Oh, uh, okay, yeah. I did, I'd forgotten that, like numbered, pointed, Yeah. Like, not crit- Eeks. It was, well, I said sort of about it in my life. Yeah, yeah. I used I used to note stuff down as I listened, and I thought I was being helpful. You were, of you were. but we were quite frightened of you. Yeah. yeah. Well, we first met Sarah when she was in one of the best co- cosplay um, costumes I ever saw at Melksham Comic Con when we were greeted oh, well, by um, Rocket Raccoon. Were you not there? That you were there. Uh, no, I weren't there that no, year. No, I, I didn't. I didn't beat Tony. It was just as well because you know how much he hates cosplayers. He probably yep. would have punched yeah. me. No, Sarah, <laughs> the, uh, I punch all the other ones, not you. But the oh, first time I met Sarah was at London Super Comic Con. Oh yes. yeah. yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, this you is. Made me, you made me take a photo holding my copy of Vanguard, and like looking really, really awkward because you said, let's take a photo and I was standing there holding the book up like trying to smile and oh, trying to work out what I was to do. had before we came on air, you posing as it comes into a whole new realm of... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. You know what also goes off the rails every week? Normally our ad for um, 
Our lovely Comic sponsor, House. Comic House. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. We are sponsored. Who would have thought it? Um, yeah. But yeah, Comic House are, are the sponsor of this little show. Um, we had Pete on a couple of weeks ago for a fantastic talk good. about digital comics. Um, but Comic House itself is an indie comic marketplace with a difference. Um, if you sell your comics, and like, it's just another way to get your work out there. If you self-publish, you can list your like book like if, if you've got physical copies on their site for free and start selling straight away um they've also got an app which is brilliant especially for those just starting out with digital comics because on comic house the library is growing all the time and uh yeah they've normally got a feature section and everything what's on there at the moment Dan? we're in the top 10 again hey. oh nice like bros <laughs> well they're in the top 10 what, they're twice? Not in the top 10 right oh. now is oh. there a top 10 still is there still a top 10 I don't know yeah, if it's top. So. Look, comics is There's a, a competition, shot. guys. It doesn't matter who's number one. As long it as does. people are reading comics, let's all be friends, yeah? Yeah, but we want money to... <laughs> <laughs> no, who we'll makes money out of comics? Certainly yeah. not me. Yeah. <laughs> so this week we've got uh, Gallant and Amos issue six from Fair Spark Books, uh, yeah. Meat and Tales of Astoundment from Marcosia, Leaf from, uh, again from Fair Spark Books, uh, Ting Budong from John uh, Schwartz. Did you uh, say then? Uh, <laughs> it's called Ting Budong. Okay. I've only got the title. I can't, <laughs> can't editorialise. We've got Surrealsville issue 15 from Rob White, Parallels 2, Gods of Men 2, which is fantastic, and uh, Lady Phantom 3. Oh. And yes. thousands more on Comic House. Yes. I reviewed one of Nicole's books who did Leaf, Nicole Bates. Um, do you know that Nicole's got a hotel? Do you know that? No. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, yeah, I reviewed one of her books um, today on the blog. Well, uh, uh, hang on, you drop you drop a bit of information like that in, and then you just glaze over it. Well, the Nicole Bates has got a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> it's a motel. The joke would have landed better if you said. That. Yeah, exactly, uh... exactly. <laughs> Did I tell you, I've got to make it eighteen months. I, uh, what I think is brilliant is I really, I honestly didn't get that joke until Sarah just Same. explained it to me. Yeah. <laughs> That's how Only much you messed goes. it up, Esmond. <laughs> <laughs> but what what you haven't messed up this week is our sponsorship ad. So definitely, <laughs> yes, check, definitely check out Comic House. Just ignore him, everyone. He's trying. Just ignore him. He'll, he'll be fine. He's like a T Rex. If you just ignore him, he won't, he won't spot you. I'll bring uh, up your nose. <laughs> But yes, there's loads of uh, great digital books on the Comic House app, and there's a 14-day free trial, and the library's just getting bigger all the time, because more and more people are adding their books. And it's not, as far as I know, it's not like Netflix, where every time you want to watch something, you go to search for it, and it's disappeared, even though you've seen it for the past yeah. three months on there. Um, yeah, and Comic House, the library's growing all the time, so to find out more, go to comichouse.com, and uh, yeah, just find out about these great people who are deciding to sponsor this, this show. Um, mm. Even though we do this to their reputation, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, on on with on with this week's show. Yes. Um, it's a bit of a this as we speak now. Um, September is just ending, October is just about to begin, and we talked about convention season, um, yep. which we say st- starts around February, don't we? Um, sort with, of restarts, with, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. sort of restarts, yeah. and then, then it paused for a bit during the summer. I know there's some shows and certainly lots of things going on, um, but as we speak, the next few weeks are going to be very, very busy um, for us here in Awesome Towers. Um, yes, I'm, I've called it that, and I think I'm just going to keep calling it that from now on. <laughs> um, because we've got conventions out of the wazoo all over the world, up and down the country, not just ones we're going to be at, but there seems to be events happening all over the UK and beyond. Um, in fact, we um, we put a shout out about um, before we get stuck into the topic. We put a little shout out about MCM Glasgow, didn't we? Oh uh, yes, which was this, this weekend, weekend, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, which from from what I gather seemed to go quite well. Yeah, I, th- I think. Did it okay? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I've, I'm... I've seen I've seen happy people saying that they were mm. selling very well. Like, so, oh, who was it who sold out on their first day? So they oh, um, basically yeah. sat there today with no stock left at all. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's not bad going, I it's suppose. A, it's a good yeah. problem to have, isn't it? Themselves, yeah, it is. Like, yeah, yeah. And uh, I certainly um, saw clips of like people queuing up to go in on the first day. I think it was Mark Abnett. He, um, he had a video. He shared a video of like. Oh, I think it was Mark who sold out, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, nice. you, he put a, he put a post on the group and he's saying, <laughs> "If you're there, pop over because I'm a bit bored because I've sold out." Yeah. But yeah, it's a yeah. tricky one gauging it as well because. 
you can yeah, man. do fucking shitloads of stuff and not sell. Yeah. You've had yeah. direct first hand experience of that. Yeah. That's and, my uh, week this week is working out what to order for all the upcoming no brow shows. And it's yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's, uh, it's a difficult one because you you can't say, oh it's it's MC it's the it, that's the MCM issue you'll either always sell out or you won't sell anything. But I think it's across the board you you don't know you ain't got a clue yeah we yeah. ain't got a clue anymore we can't judge it. Yeah. There's there's the odd one where we kind of know you're not gonna really you know there's a couple that historically yeah. have just been disasters. Yeah. But the even like little zine fairs and stuff have been we've been taken off at and yeah. you know yeah it's difficult to work out yeah and and certainly. Um, We've talked a lot about conventions over the past like couple of months or so, um, but it, it certainly benefits you if you've got something a bit more to offer, as well as the the books. Sometimes, if if you like, you're an independent doing it on your own, sort of. You know, you've got like the people like John Tucker's of the world, and you know all these great people like Charles Raymond and stuff doing like commissions of D and D characters, and all all of this. Or he does his fake on, doesn't he? Which is a fantastic yeah. idea. Yeah, it's um, yeah. So you know, it, it helps you if you've got stuff like that as well. But um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to judge. I mean, certainly, I'm looking forward to the next couple of months. Um, obviously, we've got two shows, which we're going to give a shout out to later. Tony's mm, yeah. out and about all over the shop, which we'll talk about in just a minute. I know because yeah. Sarah's going to be at one of these shows as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, con- convention season is certainly properly in full swing, and it seems like all the convention uh, organizers and stuff have. It's almost like they've had a party and decided to just take place at the same time, which is it's a bit, isn't it? Yeah. Um, which is no one's going to make all of them um, as a punter or, or as an exhibitor, and certainly it'll be painful for your wallet if you did. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, whatever shows you, you you go to, you know, we hope that they're absolutely fantastic times. Um, but t- Tony and Sarah may meet each other. Yeah, hoping to have a meet up. We're having a meet up with. Uh, is it what day are we meeting up, Sarah? Is it Saturday? We're meeting the Cumber, Mister yes. Mister Cucumber. This, we're meeting him. This is at New York Indeed. Comic Con this year. Yeah, so I'm flying out Wednesday morning. Are you flying out? When are you flying out, Sarah? Wednesday afternoon, evening. Oh, okay. So right. I'm just just behind you. Right. Who are dangerous place the, to be? <laughs> yeah, it's better than me being behind you. Let's face it. The <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I'm went. So New York is four days, Thursday to Sunday. Um, I'm flying out the Wednesday, getting off the plane and getting a a cab all the way to the Javits to help with the setup because it's quite a. I think MCM's bad. New York's like a a week setup. I think you know. Yeah, you're gonna be there with uh, uh, no bro, aren't you? you? Yeah, so I'm on yeah. the no bro. Well, with, but essentially, you won't, if you look us up, you won't find a no bro table, but you'll find a Hilda table. So we've got one end of the Hilda table for books. Right. Um, so we'll be selling the books there, uh, me and Jeff. Um, so pop pop by if you're there. But it's um, it's a long day. I think by the the end of the panels is sometimes like ten o'clock at night at New York. Wow. So it's I, I can't remember what time it opens there. Is it ten? Ten. Yeah. Yeah. It opens at I, ten. I'm not staying past four either of the days I'm there because I've got I've got other places to be and people to see and places to go and well, and also to do. You're, you're in New York as well, isn't it? You know. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The swinging scene in New York's pretty cool. So the <laughs> will be. <laughs> Are you talking about like the swings in playgrounds? No. no. <laughs> then I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so yeah, but I mean, it opens at ten, and we obviously got to be in early. Um, and then you're not leaving till after ten, and it is constant. You know, it's like yeah. if you want to get across a hall at New York, it's like you shuffle for about three quarters an hour just to get anywhere near the exit. Fucking yeah. hell. Yeah. See, the, the, this, the, the more I hear about it, the more I'm put off. Although I'm glad I'm, I'm not going Saturday and Sunday, and I presume they're busier than the well, busy, busy yeah. day. Sunday, yeah. like the, late, the late Sunday is good for buying, so I do a lot of my back issue shopping on the Sunday. Yeah. Um, right. But the your, the Artist Alley, which is I'm guessing is probably where you'll go, Sarah. Knowing you, yeah. you're a comics fan, that's a lot easier. That's a lot. It's still busy, but it's a lot freer to walk around and. There's, you can, there's little bits you can sit down on the floor at the side wall and stuff like that, and that's quite nice. Cool. Um, but the main floor with all the you know pop culture stuff is just crazy, crazy. But, I'm uh, planning on walking through that once, just well, out of curiosity the, to see what uh, it's like, and that's it. As you look at it, as you look at the Javits, the far right-hand side normally, I didn't go last year, but normally is where the OA is and the back issues. Right. The OA. Oh, okay. Is just... Oh, so they're upstairs. Okay. Yeah, the OA is worth looking at, because the original art, because it's just. Oh yeah, like definitely. Kirby Pages and Wrightson, <laughs> Ditko, and you know, you name you name the person, Wally Wood, 
And yeah. there's, there's just pages. Some, will there be some I can actually afford? Yeah, I mean, I bought, well, but... I bought like a Timothy <laughs> Truman page. I bought a Timothy oh, Truman wow. page for twenty dollars last year. Wow! Oh my God. Wow! Yeah, yeah. Well, Keith yeah, Giffen I'm... for twenty five. You know, that's great. My big mylar curry sleeve. I mean, that's yeah. what I want to buy is some is some pages. That's that's what all my budgets going towards. Well, there's some hot flips stalls there, so you can get the sleeves. You can get the um the big plastic sleeves. You know depending on oh, what size the artwork is. It's worth yeah. waiting until you get there to see good. what size it is because different eras and different companies use different size That's paper. Big. You know. Yeah. Well, mine's, yeah, it's bigger than A3, the one that I normally take, and I've never found anything that didn't fit in it yet. Yeah. So come on then. Come on, Mrs. Moneybags. What are you buying? What you got planned? Oh, I don't know. That's what I mean. But that's what I, 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 I'll buy what I come across that I like when I get there. But that's what I, I want to buy more original pages than books because books are heavy and i don't yeah want you're to... right yeah you are right yeah. yeah yeah we are um definitely i think in, in the future near future it's something i'm planning actually and i'm talking to the guys off air about it but um original art and the, the whole market of that and the yeah. sales of it, it is a topic we haven't discussed yet and i we definitely want to have a show about that so that's in the definitely in the pipeline there's, there's a real art to buying it as well you know, I know I know collectors who wait, who know when a, a, a book's going to drop because they take their art deal, the art dealer for that person out for lunch. You know, there's that sort of stuff going yeah. on. It's, uh, well, you know, I'm talking about there. Yeah, Sarah. You know, so I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People buy whole books as well nowadays, don't yeah. they? They'll buy yeah. like every page of the book, and it's like it's crazy. Yeah. I wish I had that much money. <laughs> I can't remember who it is who's got a whole commandy issue. Is it Larson? I can't remember now. It, Eric Larson. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's a. Oh, I mean, the, the, it's unaffordable now, Kirby stuff. But when I first started going to conventions, you know, it was affordable. Yeah. It just you just weep when you you sometimes you look at these pages and you think. I remember looking at I've got a Master of Kung Fu hung up page hung up in front of me, and I remember looking at it thinking, it's a hundred dollars. Do I buy it? You know, and it's a it's a Gene Day page, and I'm thinking, do I buy it? It's a hundred dollars. I've got you know. Yeah, um, and I'm glad I did because now it would it'd God, be yeah. ten times. That, I mean, you know? I'd I'd love to get in, get some original art, but I've got nowhere to display. You know, I'd want to display it and you know have it. Yeah. Rather than I know some people have like folders of the stuff and they keep it in in drawers and stuff. I for for me, if you've got that kind of stuff, it's got to be on the wall. It's, it's got to be pride of place. It's got to, you know. I rotate mine, so I have mine mostly in frames. Some in click frames. Yeah. And I'll rotate it, you know, yeah. every so often. You know, there's yeah. a couple of pages that stay there. Yeah, it's I do that with prints up. as well. Like you know, yeah. if, you know, if you got, yeah, yeah. if if you know like what frames you got or what size you're working with, then yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think that's a great idea to sort of like just circulate it every so often and freshen it up. Yeah, um, yeah. But it, it was like at, um, Lawless in when was that? That was May, wasn't it? Was it March? Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, and the room at the back of one of those rooms, there was just a couple of folders just open, and there were pages just sort of scattered around from like 2000 AD and stuff. And you just look at it, and you know, it's <laughs> it's it's, it's, ridic wow. it's ridiculous. Like like just sit when you you can the tangible feel yeah. of like a like a painted page sometimes. Yeah, which I like to buy pages that I remember reading. You know, that yeah. really sort of were noteworthy yeah. when I read them. You know? Yeah. Do yeah. you have to uh, like displaying them? Say you're gonna hang them on the wall. I yeah. guess you gotta be careful where you put them because if they keep on getting hit by sunlight, well, that yeah. obviously that will yeah. fade. Yeah. Fade. Yes. Well, you've got to you be careful. Special with, uh... glass. Yeah. 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 yeah you, if but... you get museum glass, it it um it's you know it filters out the sun rays yeah. or whatever. It's it's expensive. I mean, well, I mean, it's ex it's probably not as expensive as the page you're putting in it, but well, it's, it's worth it. Fra framing. It's stuff. Yeah. Professionally framing fade. is. Supremely expensive. Yeah, it costs. Yeah. Certainly, if you're yeah. just buying prints, it'll cost more than your print a lot of the time. But like, yeah, yeah. if you're yeah, buying like a Kirby piece or something that's like, yeah. it's an invest or like an investment. You surely you want to invest in that as well. Yeah, yeah. Alex, I've got I've got one in front of me that Alex Robinson did for me, the first New York I went to, so the early 2000s, yeah. and um, it's fate. I put it in the wrong place, and some of the pencil lines on that has faded oh. as well. I had it above my desk at work for a while, so it's sort of one of those sort of things. Yeah. 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 Um, but um, yeah, I think the other thing you started seeing more of, I don't know if you, you've seen this on eBay or anything, is color guides. So they're selling color guides to oh, oh, the comics. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not sure how you prove that is. That you is. know what I mean? So like an yeah, in-house color, color guide for like, so like a kind of a manual of how to color the, the, every character. character. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
And then oh. have like the, the breakdown of the colours they they use within it. Yeah, if you have a look online now, there's there's quite a few. I'll put I'll put a link up on the on the Facebook mm. group and see what people think of it. Yeah. There's a couple of Mike Zek pages actually that are out that are sort of tempted, and they're a lot cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, okay. They're, because they're not the original art. They're just you know saying this is the colour of this costume, this is the colour. They the little notes in the the margins and stuff, you know. Yeah, it's still neat. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, it's I, I, yeah, I think certainly um, this will tie nicely into our topic this week. But yeah, New York Comic Con. Uh, obviously, Tony's going to be there with No Brow, so he's going to be there. Uh, yeah, if you're there though, and you, you just message us on one of the apps yeah. we're on, you know, yeah. and come yeah. and say hello. We're really looking forward to it. The um, just one before we go off that, Vin. So, uh, Sarah, who, who, what artists are you looking out for? Is there anyone that you would love to buy? You know, you know, anyone that you think if you saw art by, um... buy. What, who's there? Um, well, no, yeah, just there's... any art. Well, you know, original art. So oh, you're going to oh, buy a page oh, of original oh. art. God, I don't know. I don't know what I can afford. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm hoping stuff will be cheaper there than it than it would be here. But, oh, I mean, is. it might not yeah. be. Um, I'm, I don't know. As you say, if I see something and it's a page that I remember from something that I've read that I loved and I can afford it, I'll buy it. So, so what what, what would be in your wheelhouse, Sarah? What, I'm thinking, knowing you as I do, I'm just going to say some maybe early Vertigo or something like that, or what sort yeah. of thing? Yeah, yeah. You, you know I'm a Vertigo girl. I mean, I'd love to get some, uh, like, like, as you say, going on to the, the theme later, I'd love to get some painted pages, mm. you know, yeah. sort of rather than just line work, because you do see them sometimes. And yeah. Painted comic art is my favourite thing in the world, so... That would be that would be yeah. gorgeous to I, I don't know a, you know could you imagine a page from like Moonshadow or something like sort oh of, yes that would I mean that would be amazing so yeah or I a mean, that, page that, that, or something yeah yeah oh, yeah but the, him I would probably wouldn't be able to afford would I but I mean yeah. like sort of I I, I I don't know so I mean it, yeah, it, yeah I, I I know what I like when I see it but yeah I I love painted stuff I'd love to I when I get original art i like the more they've sort of corrected it and the more they've stuck bits over things and yeah. the more they've white out it, you know like the stuff like that the more i love it so yeah. i kind of i like the really really messy pages that they've really worked at and sort of you know worked into yeah um, well, moon, moon shadows john j mooth is it john j mooth yes yeah yeah, yeah he's john got a lovely who, style he's not talked about enough i don't think the wolverine things do you remember at the comic mart the uh, I was in the breakdown those, um, or something like that. Was have, it? Have, yeah, Havoc and Wolverine breakdown, the, the yeah. mini series. So that yeah, was in same, the early same, days of the prestige doing. format stuff, wasn't it? And he's got a real sort. Yeah. Of, he has got. A, he's very Sinkovich, isn't he? With without. Yeah, he's not yeah, quite, he's quite not as experimental. Quite as, yeah, exactly. He's, yeah, he's not quite as sort of abstract and not quite as as energetic. Um, yeah. But no, lovely, lovely painted. I, I find though. him influenced. I would say maybe something like Jeffrey Catherine Jones influences a bit. That that sort of distant sort of echoey style yeah yeah yeah, like sort of pastel colors and sort of you know quite like sort of yeah faded out yeah lovely Uh, okay i was chatting to falpy today about um he bought the the press the uh the treasury edition of of captain america's bicentennial battles where it is and um i was reminded that barry windsor smith inked kirby's pages on that imagine a page of that there's a combination (laughs) yeah (laughs) Uh, oh well there you go yeah so <laughs> <laughs> yeah as we i mean a lot of art, artwork talk already which is perfect for this week's show yeah. so yeah when new york comes well who knows if we'll get some audio from there you never know you never know yeah, where you're gonna, yeah. yeah we, well i'm traveling out with um mr wild goose so we might do a bit of an on the road mm. uh, i haven't told you yet that but yeah that sounds like a fun thing to do we can uh, mention uh chris's wild goose Project. Well, yeah, why not? As as yeah, as we're as we're, timely. As we're we've all watched it, haven't we? Have you watched it, yeah. Sarah? Yes. Very good. It's isn't amazing. It? Yeah. What we're yeah. talking about is uh, uh, this is the trailer, isn't it? Yeah. Which has been released for the uh, short film of a book that's been mentioned quite a few times on the show in the past. <laughs> yeah, book of the uh, year from a couple of us, wasn't it? Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. This uh, this of course is porcelain, uh, a gothic yeah. gothic fairy tale, isn't it? That's the full. I think you're right. Title yeah. of the book, but I think it's just called Porcelain, isn't it? This short film. Um, yes, that was released um, this week. Um, we'll put a link in the show notes um, because anyone who knows this book, and I know a lot of our listeners have already got it. If you haven't got it, um, in all, I know we big up an awful lot of books, but in all seriousness, there's yeah. a, this is a trilogy of, of books just across the board, storytelling wise, is pretty unrivaled. Um, yeah, don't, let's not mention it. Forget I hope, Ben, ben yeah. Reed as well, who wrote yeah, it. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, 
you know, I mean, they're, they're the nicest, one of the nicest creative teams in, in comics. And the but... drunkest people we've had on the show no, for a while. They're, <laughs> they're absolute monsters. Quite brilliant. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I had to bleep out a C word when someone was talking uh, about something. <laughs> I'm not just who that was. Um, no, but we love was them in all seriousness. Christian take something at me rather than yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Por- porcelain yeah. Is, a, is a stunning uh, story, and just just in general and just seeing that there's three books that if they do a fourth uh one day that would be beautiful if they only ever manage to do the three it's a perfect trilogy oh it's so good it ends yeah. the ending of it broke my heart yeah yeah genuinely yeah i cried Sorry? so much yeah oh did you yeah, yeah. yeah. So fantastic much. it's a fantastic book yeah yeah and and the so the first book has been essentially adapted into a short film isn't it yeah. Um and it looks looks beautiful. The trailer was released. Um congratulations to everyone who was wor- working on it. Um I'm I... Christian's brother, isn't it? Who's yeah. who, who, who helped on it. And Lenny Henry, I love, love, love Hen- Lenny Henry. He's so cool. He's such I was speaking to Zach Zach Cobb, I think his name is. He's a listener and he, he works in the Forbidden Planet and he was saying every week Lenny Henry comes in, buys some books, unassumingly buys books because he loves comics. I'm thinking, that's like the best thing ever. Yeah. 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 He's he looks so good yeah. in that in that role. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, they, and it is yeah. a comedy role Did as well. He? Yeah, he has. I, he. I reckon yeah. that's because he's doing loads of acting on the stage, and I think that takes it out of you, doesn't yeah. it, a bit? Yeah, yeah, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Especially um, if you're doing a matinee performance as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it does look brilliant, and obviously, um, just the special effects as well. We don't want to spoil it for you. If you don't know anything about oh, this graphic God. novel, when so you watch good. when you watch the trailer, you'll be like, "Oh, I need to read this," and you can. So. Yeah, yeah so get, I don't, I don't get know ahead when, of the game. When is it going to be released? Up. I'm not sure, actually. I don't know. I shall ask him. It'll probably do, a, I would imagine, short films. It'll probably be a lot uh, doing the festival circuit for a yeah. fair old time. Um, <clears throat> but, you, yeah, so so stay tuned, because as soon as we know, you'll know. And, yeah. Well, you probably won't need this anyway, because it will just take over be the all internet. place. Yeah. I'd love to see that on around Christmas time. Yeah, I think that would really work. Oh yeah, yeah lovely. It won't be this Christmas, lush obviously. BBC production of it. Right? There, there's nothing Brilliant. you like more than crying at Christmas, isn't there, Dan? <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. Um, well, it's, it's like a dark gothic fairy tale. I think, yeah. like, on at the right time on the right channel, I think they can do really well. Yeah, very much so. So yeah, yeah. Congrats to all involved, and uh, yeah, stay. I wouldn't want to put uh, Mrs. Brown's boys in a jeopardy though. Don't, of a prime don't bring, the, don't Christmas. bring those words into the show. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping Michael McIntyre's got a role in it somewhere. <laughs> Yeah. Jesus Christ, that, that's well, like the second or third time both of those names have been mentioned this week. Yeah, not on the show, thankfully. It was before we started recording. Ex-hamster. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, from all of that goodness to this week's yes. topic, um, as we said earlier, Sarah has. Um, we, we, we knew that Sarah's artwork was great. Anyway, now be quiet, Sarah, because we're, we're going to be nice to you here, and uh, <laughs> we, we don't care that you're, you're going to you you're one of the most modest people ever. So you just have to be quiet and listen to us while we're nice to you. <laughs> but yeah, no, in all seriousness, Sarah's work is absolutely brilliant. And we've been hoping that she would uh, get stuck into comic art work of which she's jumped in head first. Um, but it isn't just, it isn't like digital. It's not like sketches or anything like that. But Sarah's work is very much, I mean, no doubt you've probably seen some of her work online anyway. Lots of, painting and mixed media and what other um before we get stuck into it what sort of media do you do you prefer to use in because uh, you know i don't want to say exactly what you've been using might as well hear it from you yourself oh, okay um i t- oh, god i don't think there's anything i i i don't use um i mean, no. that, I mean that's that's <laughs> you're not one of these people who like oh okay. right i painted that in blood do you do that sort of no. thing as well no, okay. No, no. I, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't done that. I, yeah. I was going to say something awful then. Anyway, no. <laughs> but like okay, traditional art materials that you can actually buy in an art shop. Um, all of those. But yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that's the beauty of mixed media, mm. is that you put anything on the page that helps you get the picture that you've got in your head, or helps you tell the story that you want to tell. You know, almost regardless of what it is, you can collage in fabric, or you know, photographs, or uh, you know, sort of any anything textured yeah. or whatever, and I'll use all sorts. Of, you know, I'm, I'm normally. I mean, like, I, I was making something earlier, and on one little thing, I've used alcohol inks, um, sort of mica, which is a sort of a like a, oh, a weird mineral thing. Um, I've used acrylic paints. I've used watercolor pencils. I've used uh, interference paints. I've used sort of everything. You know, like sort of about ten different things on one 
little uh, block that's about sort of five inches by four inches. You know, so I'll just I'll just throw anything on. Yeah, it's if like it, exper- it, experimentation, it isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, if it ends up looking like what I want it to look like, then then I yeah. mean, which is why when I did Tony's pages, you know, I, I was sort of you know like I made a quilt out of um, tissue paper and yes. like. And I sort of, you know, made air out of little bits of cheesecloth that I dyed, no, and I, you know, you know, I mean, clearly, like, sort of... you are a crazy person, I... Sarah. We know this for a fact. You know? <laughs> it's all, it's really evident. But for those who haven't seen it yet, Sarah made um, a breeze because it's a breeze that has an important role in in her story, and uh, she made like using little strands of material to show the wind. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Incredible yeah. stuff. And yeah. to see um, to see that in sort of in the physical pages. Um, is is amazing anyway because I I was the lucky man that had the job of scanning them in, um, but it is it's that sort of um, it's that process of painting and mixed media yeah. artwork in, in comics that we wanted to just focus on a little bit before because we've talked about a lot of different styles of art you know we've talked about the digital we've talked about penciling inking and stuff but we've we you know when it came to doing the show I was like oh we haven't properly shone a light on you know this we talked about some artists that we love who do fully painted stuff. But certainly, we haven't really discussed in, in any sort of depth like mixed media artwork in, in comics, yeah. which and and Sarah described um, those, the things that she was doing there. Certainly with with Tony's comic, and to see the original artwork is amazing. But I love seeing that. I mean, thankfully it scanned out all right. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. But you got a question? You've had a couple of people curious as to how you scanned that in, haven't you? Online as well. I made I made a blood pact with an ancient evil deity, and. Uh, <laughs> Joe. No. <laughs> no, it was um Oh, right, I'm going to start. Yeah, tell us. Yeah, tell yeah, us. yeah. well, it it was basically just scanning. Uh th- thankfully it was a half decent scanner. And it's just just as high re- resolution as I could get. I I think um because the pages themselves were what was the size there? It's Did you because it wasn't it wasn't It's, it's not quite A3, was it? No. Bit, it was um Yeah, so so I tried it, to the ratio right for what yeah. you needed figured yeah. you could shrink it but um yeah which which I, was I which is perfect big. thank you very much for that but um yeah so th- the artwork was already bigger than the intended sort of um the final product which is always going to help when you're like you're doing your artwork anyway because those fine little details and all those little things are going to look so much better when it's shrunk down um yeah. to about 67 percent but yeah, it was just purely a case of like you know my scanner was okay. I scanned it at high resolution. I well, I think I scanned it at four hundred DPI. Now for print, you only need three hundred DPI, but I always like to go a little bit bigger. And right. then you know because it will just it it just kept the clarity of it even more when I shrunk it down to the exact size it was supposed to be. And uh, thankfully, because with with the materials you had used and everything, everything was so clean and crisp. And that's what I loved about the page themselves as well. There wasn't. You know, there wasn't any murkiness. You know, all this material. Thankfully, there were. <laughs> it it stayed in place as well. Like Tony was talking about. Yeah, the that's breeze. a worry, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't want to scan something, and all of a sudden, something the hard work that you've done has suddenly it's all moved. fallen off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that's something definitely to bear in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think when you're um you're scanning your um, mixed media work, just be aware of that as well, because when you're scanning it, I mean. Sarah's work was brilliant. It was clean. I didn't have to put anything down on the scanner. It's not like I had to put like some acetate in front of it or anything like that. I didn't have to worry about scanning it and then picking it up and then having to clean the scanner because there was loads of dirty marks from like glue and stuff. Mm. It was all, you know, they, it was all it was all perfect. So, and I'm just glad yeah. that, you know, because I'm scanning for uh, someone else's work for their book that these guys are putting together. So thankfully, um, it came out well and everyone was happy. I suppose our only alternative there would have been to photograph it, wouldn't it, yeah. in some yeah. way? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and that's a very that's, old... I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, like you know, like sort of Dave McKean Sandman covers and stuff. Yeah, we're going to so get onto them. Mental. Yeah, you could, you know, you could never have shoved them in a flatbed scanner. I mean, no. I tried to keep those pages for that book. I knew they were going to be scanned, even though I was sticking all sorts of random stuff on them. I tried to keep them at least flat. Yeah. You know, so you could get it into a scanner, but I mean, yeah, I mean, they used to do proper big 3D assemblages for for yeah. comic work yeah. back and in the old days, and yeah. they had to be photo. Yeah, they must have to, because like, I mean, we're talking about yeah. like people who have have done this work at A3 or 11 by 17 or whatever your artwork is, but there are those of you out there who, you know, you're going to be painting something A2. 
you know, A3, which, you know, even if you take it into a professional company to get it scanned, it's that size, it's going to cost you a pretty flipping penny to yeah. get that sort of scanned. Right. So if you've got, like, bigger work, you know, we talked a little bit about it there, like Dave McKinnon stuff, what, what are the ways that people can actually, like, get that? You know, you're talking about photography, is that the best way to do it? Just how, how would you get that done? Yeah, I, know I don't know what they did with his stuff. Oh, he, uh, you know, I've seen photos of it in the studio when they were photo. I mean, because you know, I mean, like they were huge, weren't they? It was about four foot tall. He he did those assemblages for the, or maybe. So it was almost four. like a shelf arrangement, wasn't it? As I yeah. remember, off the top yeah. of my head, with a central image. So it was almost That's surrounded true. by shelves with things on them, and, and there's with, like a yeah, little trinkets on and stuff. But yeah, I've seen photos of that cover, like you know, that assemblage in a sort of a, a proper photography studio being you know photographed professionally for the yeah. for the, the for the comic um and like mark buckingham's miracle man covers because they were the same they were like sort of 3d they okay. had to be photographed um so yeah all a bit of a palaver and it's, it's something that people, uh, certainly most people probably took for granted because you see a little comic book with this wonderfully painted cover and you look at it for five seconds and probably move on and you don't realize the, the scale yeah, no, of what some these of this days the, the 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 return you get for that probably people wouldn't do it as much but back then it was cutting edge wasn't it we were we were trying things all the time you know yeah. i think i think small press is perhaps where that lays now because you don't get only don't get it with marvel and dc so much yeah. do you yeah. you know yeah and certainly i think with the the advances in printing technology and and the the better printing got um it, it, it painted covers you know painted artwork and mixed media artwork went from being something that was an extravagance for just the cover then all of a sudden you could do it all the way through because i think yeah. if, it, if it's newsprint comics as much as we love them you know the dirty paper that we always always laugh about and stuff yeah but if you got painted on that you're going to lose so much you're going to lose yeah. so much of that texture but with the advance of you know glossy paper or you know even it doesn't have to be glossy actually but you're seeing more and more painted and mixed media work in comics probably than ever before, aren't you now? Yeah, I think so. And, and in a lot of high-end art books as well. Is, I yeah. Think, yeah. There's that blurring of the lines between that sort of thing now, isn't there? Especially with this comic collector spending a lot on high-end art books and high-end hardbacks, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Do you yeah. see that stuff? What do you guys the think? The big artist edition things where you yeah. get to see it all yeah. full size. Yeah. Or just... I was going to say, what do you guys think of... Uh the move to digital and digital painting i don't quite hold being a bit of a philistine maybe not uh, i don't hold it as quite high regard as someone who does it traditionally i've got nothing against digital painting whatsoever but uh, yeah it's a funny one isn't it is it's, there's a less of a, a a texture to to it for me sometimes you know it depends, i mean it depends who's doing it i mean like sort of written in big <laughs> letters down here i've got a couple of pages of notes just to make sure that i didn't completely run out of things to say but like i was gonna <laughs> yeah. say that the the person I think who's working now, who's continuing yeah. tradition of like really visually arresting mixed media style artwork is Mitch Gerrards, and he's all digital. Like and he mixes digital... photographic stuff, doesn't he? As well, yeah. there's a, I mean, an element of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he'll scan in like you know a bit of sellotape and put that in there, and he's like sort of smudging stuff around and he's yeah. he's got that real sort of like mixed media vibe like he's only know, really moved said... into that recently i remember he's, his yeah, um yeah he hasn't always worked in that style yeah um but i get the same emotional response from his art as i do looking at dave mckean or, or sinkevich's art you know yeah. so he's got the he's got feeling to it even though he is working digitally and he's doing some stuff you could only do digitally, you know, like, so he's not just trying to mimic the look of a painted page or the look yeah. of a collage. Yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's really experimental and inventive and I, I love the work he's been doing. Yeah. And I'm going to throw myself at his feet in New York. Oh. And <laughs> kiss his toe. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the, uh, uh, whereabouts would that just be in his hotel room, Sarah? Yeah. Would that be? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that, that's... <laughs> You, when you see artists like that who who start to um, mix it up, they really do start to like really really push it. I mean, I think Sean Sean Gordon Murphy is another example of of someone yeah. that he had such a sort of clean style, and as it went on, you know, like punk rock Jesus and stuff, you saw this person. I love punk rock Jesus. It's yeah, so just good. going off on a tangent of like you know the ink washes and the splashes and just throwing everything on a page. And, yeah. and seeing yeah. what turns up, you know, and you, you see a lot more sort of 
veteran artists, for want of a better term. You know, as soon as they've, you know, that they've made their name maybe with a, a, a bigger book. As soon as they start doing their own stuff, they can, they can just well, play. The, the, yeah. the example, the best example for me, and the way I, I discovered mixed media in its purest form was Kirby. If you look at some yeah. of the Fantastic Four, Kirby would stick photographs in the background. Oh yeah, there was um, there's a brilliant example it's actually when we um, so yeah, yeah um, a, a shout out to at Jonathan Wyke on Twitter um, because when we um, put a shout out for this, you know who's your favourite examples of it? He said the King of Course, and uh, yeah. he he posted a, a, like a, essentially a collage page. Um, did you see that on there? I, I, no, I haven't seen that yet. No, which is, um, that, is that from the FF? Is it? Or... I, I think it might be the FF. I'll have to look it up. Yeah. While we're talking. Um, but it's a beautiful yeah, it is, page yeah. where essentially the only inked bit um, is the speech bubble and the character, and it's yeah. very interesting what's going on around it. And he, got, I think he got a bit of flack for that. I certainly remember some English Marvel UK letters pages mentioning it, but yeah. I actually don't mind it. I actually I love that sort of experiment. They got flack then. Yeah. How would it be treated now? I don't. I don't think it would be overly hated. Mm. I don't think. Do you? Or I don't. No, I don't think so. I think if anything, I mean, you see it. People are influenced by this work. You know, looking at those yeah. pages, I, I've seen that sort of style. Um, if we're talking about a bit closer to home, just the look and the feel of it, the work of like Andy Clift and Adam Falp and this sort of stuff. You know, you can, yeah. you can really see what he's doing. Um, I mean, he's always going to influence everyone, isn't he? But... Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, a, a collage there's always really, fascinates me. Sorry, I was going to say there's a really good article online somewhere. If you just like search Kirby collages or something, somebody's written a really, really yes. good, like, yes. a, almost academic article about all his collage influences and all the stuff and, and with really? like some really good examples of his best collages. Yeah, it's really interesting. I had mm. it up on my computer at work for ages. I kept going back to it because for Adam's book, you know, Adam's doing a Kirby tribute Yes, I was book. chatting yes. to him about it today. Um, it's very dope. Yeah. yeah, and so, because I did a, a collage Silver Surfer page in the, you know, like my homage to the way Kirby did his collages. He was always really in circles and sort of stuff and concentric circles on his collage pages. So I tried to, you know, ape ape that a little bit for my entry for Adam's have you book. um are you and in so, that book are yeah. you sarah i never realized oh i don't know i don't know i don't I know suspect I you'll be just to give that a quick plug because i was chat- <laughs> i was i was chatting to adam about that and you can pre-order it i pre-ordered it today at goodfornothingcomics.wordpress.com or follow adam adam falp a-d-a-m-f-a-l-p on twitter and you get it it looks it's like a really exciting project really really interesting you know he said he's going to have them at leamington and nottingham as well so i'm going to pick up a copy at nottingham yeah well oh, we will cool. probably um as we're going to be at Leamington, uh, we'll see if we can get an interview with him and talk more about it. So yeah, definitely. Nice yeah, stuff. and also speak to him about his, he's just done a, a tour of comic shops in yes, America. Yes, I know. I definitely and want to speak to him about. We this. were talking about he, that. He, while yeah, he, was he went there, to a place he... with seven hundred fifty thousand back issues. Jeez. Yeah, and he, he met Jim <laughs> Rugg there. Yeah. He basically met Jim Rugg. And who's um? He went for dinner with who's Birds in Boxes, Sarah? Daniel uh, White. Daniel White. He went for lunch with Daniel White as well. Awesome. Yeah, I'm yeah, going for lunch with your wife next week. Are you? Hey. <laughs> well, I'm going to go for lunch on my own, and it'll probably be a, a meal deal be a for three point. pounds. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, obviously, we we mentioned the the, the king, the king Kirby. Um, when we put in the showers, um, there was a few examples. We said, oh well, we sort of said, what are your favourite examples of like painting and mixed media? Obviously, uh, Simon Russell mentioned Sienkiewicz. So, do, yeah. you want, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because I, I feel we can't just gloss over that name. Yeah, Come on. of course. I mean, to me, Sienkiewicz was a guy I first saw on Moon Knight, and um, he had he had that Neil Adams vibe going on. I think it's fair to say. Would you agree, Sarah? Or yeah, he's got that sort when of. It started his... out, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, I, it, I think he. Um... I think he was deliberately aping that style when he started because he was yeah. young and was, that was almost a house style, wasn't it? And he yeah, really and it was it was also accepted. something slightly rougher and slightly slightly different. And I remember it was a slow burn and then it became a hit. And then I probably first noticed his mixed media stuff. I'm going to say on... Because New Mutants wasn't really mixed media, although it was experimental. I'm going to say... Some like. Yeah, I was going to say he had a little bit of like because I was flicking back through New Mutants earlier to sort of see oh, okay. where yeah, yeah. when he started to kick in, and there's a he's got a few bits in there where he's like 
stuck a you know like a photo in or whatever you know like he draws starting. lines between characters and yeah, stuff like he's that starting doesn't he to, to yeah see the way he wants to go but he doesn't quite yet know if he can get away with it yeah you know? and the, de- the demon bear stuff is the famous one isn't yeah. it and that's that's yeah and i don't think the newsprint suited that too much it's a little bit muddy yeah. on occasion and then of course electra assassin blew everyone's minds you know yes. it was it, it yeah. just incredible and that close-ups of first, faces and you know that was the first non-british comic i ever bought really it okay. Blew oh, okay my mind i never yeah. looked back that i picked up electro assassin and a swamp thing on the same day it was the first time i found a proper comic shop i was 17 i think walked in picked up those two walked out and that that was it it's like nice. all i'd ever read was 2000 ad i'd never seen anything else <laughs> I I like, said, what what is this i always <laughs> wondered how much money matt murdoch was on when i read electra because he's like got like <laughs> about a 10 story house <laughs> you know yes, no. lawyers they make a lot of money don't they you know yeah, true <laughs> yeah. but no but wasn't, isn't he a public defender that doesn't make that much money or is that he got I mean? uh in the um was it in the the frank miller series in daredevil he they like did a cut out of his his house and he had all these secret rooms and all sorts it was like a proper bruce wayne thing wasn't it mm. uh, yeah. okay i quite like yeah. that little flat he had in uh the tv series yeah, like, yeah but that ain't cheap either. You no. can't get a flat like that in Hell's Kitchen, yeah. Christ Almighty. The, yeah. the, big, the big neon light would obviously fuck a lot of people off, but it, it doesn't really bother him. <laughs> all, all American stuff is like that, though. Do you remember, like, you remember Married with Children? I used, I used to watch that, and I used to think they're supposed to be this like sort of poor, like working class family. They've got this huge house. With living about, in the Cosby like, house. Yeah. It looks like the Cosby house yeah. to me. Exactly, yeah. and I was like, "How, how, how, do, how come all Americans live in mansions?" Uh, I used to be convinced they did. I don't think they actually do. No. Yeah. Anyways, I've got anyway, off topic. Currently. Back to Electra Assassin. So Electra <laughs> Assassin was how many issues? Sarah? Was it six, six, or seven? Eight. Like was it? Eight was it? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and I bought it as it, as it was coming out, and it's a dense yep. read, as comics, a lot of comics were back then, and but it's, I remember it just fucking weirded me out. Who's the character with the moustaches in it? Who's the secret agent sort of? guy who's on a cut of the covers can't remember his name but it's a, I mean, remember thinking this is just fucking weird <laughs> but it was strangely addictive yeah that's, yeah that's the thing about it uh, certainly uh, with a lot of mixed media work as well isn't it? it it pushes the boundaries of um what you perceive to be a normal comic or, or normal narrative which is um yeah working on to like one of the next names that was brought up, uh, the work of Dave McKean, Martin Simpson um, yeah. at Simo Paints. He said Dave McKean's work on Mr. Punch, Signal to Noise and Black Dog. Um, yeah. And, you know, certainly the Sandman covers and things like that. That You, you know, and it, well, I, I mean, think... Black Dog from... made, me, made me miss my train station twice. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, that book is so amazing because he just goes from style to he style. Does. Like, you know, like sort of almost from page to page it's like you, it doesn't even look like it's the same person yeah. who's done yeah. the whole book that, that with the, the, the bit where the guy comes out of the house and he's surrounded by the big red i don't know what you call yes. it it's just i remember just blowing my mind yeah. like yeah. I'm, I'm absolutely obsessed with that book to the point where i wrote this like long treatise where you know you know i thought it was like super learned i wrote this long thing on it and um and we and john john not blowing my own horn but john freeman messaged me and said oh, we the, the the guardian had a um were, were told they would get the first review for it um and i wrote this long review and, and john from down the tube sent it to dave mckean and dave mckean said no that gets the first review so oh, I was nice. like, absolutely over the moon oh. and, uh, yeah and um, oh, i recall that now yeah, yeah 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 i remember the review and i went and saw um i went and saw dave mckean wasn't there but the people who published it can you remember their name sarah i can't remember who published it now no no it was like it was it was like financed by the sort of um, the to do with the sort of hundred year anniversary. Yes, you're right. It, yeah, like, yeah. Like, it, So I can't remember the name of the actual publisher, but I know it was all sort of yeah. like a, it, it, it was working it, in conjunction with them to like officially recognise the hundred years. Yeah, and he, they gave me the artist proof, so I, my copy is the artist proof, which I was like super excited uh-huh. about. Yeah. yeah. But I've bought it multiple times for other yeah. people, so I think I'm sure they got their money out of me. Do you know I mean? But I, I think that brings it. up an interesting point, though. I mean, because with that story, it, it's changing styles and you know the way it's telling a story throughout. And for that story, it works. But I, I, I yeah. think sometimes yeah. artists need to be careful. Um, someone like Dave McKean just 
just did it you know it can can pull it off but you've got to be careful well you've got to think about your reader when you're telling any sort of narrative anyway can't you because sometimes I, you can look at um painted or mixed media pages and all the pages are gorgeous you could stare at the artwork for ages yeah. but yeah. you don't care about the story the story's toffee you know you don't know where it's going and and if you don't really know what, and, what... and that's a waste yeah because exactly. those pages take a lot a lot of time and effort to put together and if if it if it get you know you don't want to waste it on a on a bad story but going back to sort of Electra Assassin how you're saying it's a weird like sort of story it's like hard to follow and like sort of when he did the stuff in the what was the 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 one-off graphic novel the Daredevil Love and War uh, oh, right, the yeah. standard one that they did I reread that for the first time since the 80s the other day okay. and that is also like quite an abstract story quite a sort of uh, you know it's it's not a straightforward story and I think mixed media artwork lends itself better to those stories that do leave you thinking and do sort of you know have you know that they're not just telling a straightforward story I yeah. don't think yeah they the play, style they play of a lot into would, mood and vibe as opposed exactly. to often story taking yeah you're telling yeah I know yeah. what you mean <laughs> Yeah, if you've got like a story that just plods along and it's you know it is a very straightforward story, then that's probably not the style of artwork no, that that no. you want or that you and, need. And it works brilliantly for like dreamlike sequences or or you know if your book is very uh, is a very dreamlike sort of landscape, then, then yeah, it's... you can change yeah. pace, you can change style, for, and then, and that often really works, doesn't it? You know, we often see changes. You know, like the Wizard of Oz, we often see black and white color changes, don't we, and stuff like yeah. that. Well, that which brings me to a question there, Sarah, and you being the expert now, obviously, yeah. what is what is the definition of mixed media? So, would mixed media be one page you had a drawing in realistic pencil line, and the next page you had a drawing in cartoony um, animation style drawings? Does it, or does it have to be a, an actual physical change of? Do you know what I mean? Physical change of medium more than that. Do you know what I mean? Does it have I to can, then be? I, I can answer your question. Um, oh, okay. I mean, it's not. <laughs> The official definition of mixed media is that on the same painting or the same, you know, sort of piece of work, you're using more than one type of art material. That's 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 right. all the the main okay. definition. So, so even if you used, you know, even if you have had a painting that had sort of, you know, some bits done in pencil and some bits done in acrylic and some bits done in oils or whatever, yeah. that would still count as mixed media. Um, but yeah, I suppose in the context of a comic, as you say, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use different mediums on the same. Yeah. Page. I don't know you on the. Could, I just I just looked at the Twitter. Page page. Yeah. yeah, I just looked at the Twitter, and some people are showing mixed media as moving from a sort of a diagrammatical pencil line to a fully painted yeah. panel within yeah. one page. Do you know what I mean? And I'm 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 open totally open to that. I just wonder what everyone thought about whether that is mixed media. I wouldn't I count that as mixed media. Right. Personally. I mean, well, yeah. I, for, for me, I don't know. You might. I draw with a pencil and then ink it and then scan it in, but I don't cast my work as mixed so media. If, if yeah. you had three panels on a page and one was an outline of, you know, like a thumbnail, and what the middle one was a an ink and pencil line, and the third one was a color, would that be mixed media? Yeah. I, don't I can know. see the I can see the example that you're looking at, and I yeah. and that's one because sometimes you get that in the back matter of a comic, don't yeah, you, you do. where they yeah. tell yeah. you how yeah. you progress from the sketch, and um. Yeah, I wouldn't call that page mixed yeah. media as such because it's really slices from three different pages. Yeah, it's isn't a process. Like that, Where, whereas that, if, yeah. if if Dan, that for instance, pencils and inks his, like his page yeah. and then he goes in and, you know, adds splashes of colour and maybe, like, you know, a bit of collage as well, that then becomes... Yeah. A, a yeah. Absolutely, yeah. 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 I think yeah. what the guy who's posted it is saying is about how the penciler has put, like, a, an ink wash on first and then yeah. the colorist has gone for the ink wash so i think that's what he's talking about gotcha. i mean a yeah, lot I of people you. a lot of people sort of basically anytime they see a painted page they call it mixed media but it isn't really if it's just purely painted like um like simon davis is slain the britannia yeah. chronicle yeah that wasn't mixed media because that's i mean that's just you know i've got, them, I've got a page of that in front of me sarah before. Yeah, nice. yeah, I, yeah. I, I bought a page from it as well. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And it's gorgeous. And I still, I, I mean, I love all painted artwork, but that's not mixed media. Mixed media is when you've, you're sort of basically throwing two different art materials together that you wouldn't usually put together or almost, you know, sort of, and, and it often involves collage or, yeah. or sort of, you know, yeah. use of 
of, of non-traditional yeah. art. I wonder what well. the most. I wonder what the most extreme version of that is you could go to. I mean, could you have a pencil page? And then you turn the page and you have to walk into another room and someone's doing a spoken word performance. Do you know what I mean? Or a somersault. I wonder what, yeah, I wonder what they say, the worst, yeah. the furthest you could ever take, it, you know. It's interesting. Well, this, I mean, I mean, you see, you're joking there in a way, but that's why digital art, much as I'm, you know, a total Luddite. I mean, I, 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 I only read real paper and I only work with real art materials. You know, I don't do anything digitally, but that's why yeah. I think the stuff that, that like you know, some people are doing now is actually showing how digital can take mixed media almost to the next stage because you can you can mix anything together. Yeah, in which ties in that. ties into you know? a question that we got. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, um, this from a JWC um, who's been mentioned a few times on this show, um, and they were interested in how the working definition of mixed media has evolved, as you say, Sarah, with the popularization of, of digital colouring. Uh, yeah. As I say, it's pretty easy to get the visual look of traditional mixed media with digital painting tools. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, is it then really mixed media? That's the thing. Isn't it? Yeah, I suppose. yeah. I mean, I mean, see, for me, see, if I'm looking at it on paper, yeah. it's just digital. I just see it as digital, because for me, like mixed media and stuff like that is a is a tangible physical thing. But that's just because I'm old school and, and a caveman. <laughs> and, and the page, the page that they've used as an example is a David Mack page um, with that sort of watercolor yeah. look, and actually. I call that mixed media anyway because no. even if that that was done traditionally it's just a painted yeah. page i mean i, I think so david it's... mack is obviously a name that we have to mention on this yeah. show um yeah. you know it would be it would be a crime not to mention him alongside like dave mckean and stuff because dave mm. mack has done so much over the years and it like from that like kabuki and obviously yeah. the, like his dare his famous like daredevil uh run yeah, and alias like, and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. No, i, I mean, remember that daredevil a... run was great what was it oh, what was yeah. the what was the character that he introduced? Oh, um, what's the the one who doesn't speak? Um, oh, oh God, God, yeah, yeah. But um, not been it recently. Yeah, but yeah. That that was a real. That came at a time when um, that was a book that wasn't like any anything I was reading because the the narrative went off into different ways, and he was like, you know, there was children's sketches mixed mixed in with like painted hand prints and you know as well as, yeah. well as all the other stuff that and i think does. he's used certain like little inserts of photographs and stuff and that's yeah. that's true mixed media isn't it you know yeah oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um yeah i mean david max seems to be specializing more nowadays just in pure watercolors like all the covers yeah. that he does yeah uh, i mean he does a ton of covers are like they're all traditional watercolors still he's not doing those digitally although i did really like the the comic that he did recently with um with Bendis, which is called Cover, not to get confused with yes. covers. Yeah, I've not read that. Um, and, um, yeah, oh, I love it. It's really good. And he's painted all the interiors for that as well. And so, because they're interiors, so he needs to go quicker. They're not quite as stylized and fancy yeah. as his front yeah. covers, you know. But yeah. it's still a really unique-looking um, book, and the story's great as well. Definitely, re I think the first trades just come out. I would recommend uh, that. I get that. It's then. not yeah, yeah, events, yeah. but I. That is 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 a he might be a, a New York. Story. He might be a New York. Um, he I often think he is. is yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, another person you're hoping to bump into, Tony, is Enrico Marini, isn't it? Oh yes. He does the He's same there. with kind of pens, watercolors, and then inks over the yeah. top. Yeah. And when he posts his videos on Instagram, it makes yeah, you cry. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's signing at the. He does make me weep. He's signing at the uh, Europe Comics. I, as soon as I noticed he's signing at the Europe Comics stall, I immediately texted Arena and said, "Right, you're hooking me up. I'm meeting him." Yeah, and, uh, she sent me. She sent me a picture of a champagne glass. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why she's our friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, what about drawing? So, so to interrupt. What about drawing, or what about art mixed with text? Is that mixed media, Sarah? Um, I don't you know mean? if, like, in in the art term, you know, like, I mean, as I say, mixed media as an as an art style. I don't. I, do, I mean. <sighs> Certainly, like I've 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 seen sort of you know people doing paintings with text either the handwritten or sort of you know like book pages mixed in and so on. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I think that can. Yeah, yeah, and um, I'll be bringing up someone later from the small press scene, Gareth Brooks, and he embroiders some of his comics. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. mixed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I use a lot of embroidery in my work. I love embroidery. I'm not as good at it as Gareth. I mean, <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I love using embroidery in my yeah. work, and not many people do. So it's kind of, and it's that's kind of what a good, I, I think USP, one of the, you know? yeah, one of the big differences as well, 
um, we're talking about obviously the texture that you get with like mixed media and when like you're making collage and things and uh, yeah. I think I think per personally you can replicate I mean w with the, the how digital has just evolved and is improving and like you know people's skills with it as, uh, are improving as it, as it goes along things will always improve and certainly it can replicate a lot of these things that we're talking about people can rep with the brushes that you get for programs and stuff you can replicate yeah. a water watercolor brush you can replicate this but i i think one of the things that that is almost impossible to replicate is texture sometimes um okay when i when i scan sarah's pages it, it kept the the feel of that you know, even yeah. though it was a flat image, you could still there was texture to the to the material and stuff in it. And I think that's very that's extremely difficult to get in digital. Um, I always, I mean, going to painting as well, I always marvel at it whenever I'm at a, a gallery or something, and you're looking at some of these ancient paintings from like the 1800s or whatever, and the fabric the looks like strokes. fucking fabric, and I, you know, it feels like you could reach out and touch it, and it would be that fabric. That is, yeah. You have to be a master I, yeah. to do that. That bog that boggles my mind every time. So to do it in digital I, would be yeah. not yeah. impossible, I think. You look yeah. at an old master in a gallery, you can still see the brush strokes in the oh. paint, and you can and you think Rembrandt held that brush, yeah, and he made that mark, yeah. and that's uh, that that sends shivers down my spine. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? And, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and also when you, if you look at it from just a, a self-published or, or you know just self-created artist. One thing, and I've, I'm certainly moving over to digital as well. But um, one of the things that you, you're missing out with that is you won't have original pages to sell. We yeah, we talk yeah, about yeah. how glorious it is to see these painted pages, and seriously, folks, if even if you and I don't have the cheddar to buy original pages, but I I love seeing them in the flesh, just flicking through like a portfolio. And looking at like some of these painted artworks, I mean, and it's the confidence of the line that yeah. just gets me. That one we were looking at this week with Enrico Marini, where he just drew a glove just with a paintbrush, and it is just yeah. perfectly formatted, yeah. just with a three or no four hesitation. slices. No hesitation. Yeah, yeah just... just goes for it. Just instinctual, beautiful. You know, it's just, oh, so good. I was yeah. thinking about this a second ago, guys. Probably the first example of mixed media for us in the Britain is the transition of a lot of comics like Eagle um, and stuff like that had stories that started as a drawing and then went into a photo story. Do you remember that? Yeah. 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 Do you remember the fabulous Freak Brothers when they decided to stop smoking weed? And they stopped. <laughs> Do you remember that issue? And they yeah, stopped smoking it. And it slowly it becomes a photograph of them just sitting oh. on a couch. Yeah. And then they sure. thought, fuck that. And they just started smoking weed again. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. We, we yeah. got, um... I, used to love, I used to love photo stories. I, I honestly, I know I've said this before. I say it all the time. I wish they'd come back. I wish like that sort of the 2000 AD and occasionally have one or sort of. Yeah. Any, any, like, any sort of like anthology comics or just something like just a couple of pages of a photo story. They're hilarious. And really big Best. in girls comics as well, weren't they? In yeah, the 70s and 80s. Yeah. My, um, my aunt was a, uh, a house master at a girls boarding school and she was always, she was always giving me these comics that she was in, you know, playing the teacher and stuff like this <laughs> where they would go along and do the photo story. Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. ex boss, when I worked in uh, W. H. Smith's head office, <laughs> so exciting, isn't name it? dropper. Um, he, he was, we, you know, like when sort of you do that thing where like sort of a new person comes and or you know, tell us something about yourself. He produced a load of old Jackie magazines, and he ah. used to be like, the, the handsome young boy in all the photo love stories. It was brilliant. Yeah. Did you I remember some really scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember some really scary photo stories of like like of horror stuff and i'm like oh my god you know where they've drawn over the top of them like the blood yes, effect or yeah, the you know yeah, yeah. the monster effect or stuff like that. they used to do that as well didn't they it's quite common yeah. used to, they still do them in viz yes so they were yeah. taking the piss yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see yeah you've got a photo story and they have they draw the effects and stuff on that's absolutely mixed media that's a perfect yeah. example like you say yeah. yeah yeah oh we should bring them back we yeah. should. I, I, We're going to do one with Vince. Happy. Vince, Vince drinking yep. a milkshake. That's going to be the new. No. One. <laughs> Flipping hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we we had a, a couple of a, a new uh, names reply to our, our shout out. So and th oh. there's a couple of um, cool artists that have been named here, or, or some new ones to check out. Um, so we'll just give a shout out to uh, at CF Sherrett. He said a lot of my work is in atypical media. 
And my fave comics artist is, and I'm going to murder this name, Brecht Evans, who watercolours okay. mostly. Have you heard of that artist? Uh, I haven't. Maybe. Yeah. But, but no. I did check out the, the link, cfsherrett.com, um, and there's some lovely stuff on there. Remind, very much reminds me of it. It's an artist from Warwickshire. Uh, very much reminds me oh, okay. of the sort of stuff you see, like Avery Hill and things like that. So. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Um, Dave Crane, uh, at yeah. Dave the Crane. I like those uh, stuff. Yeah. Yep. And yep. Uh, he said uh, Sankovic, McKean, Mac, obviously, and Baron Story and Kent Williams in that tradition too. Yep. Yeah. Ian, I was going to come yeah. to them. <laughs> yeah. He says. I'm Ian, literally coming to them. <laughs> Ian Miller in his Luck in the Head era all feels very early 90s in origin, racking my brains to think of more recent developments in that field. Yeah, Dave Crane does um, a lot of sort of found images and stuff like that. He does some really interesting stuff. Him and Simon Russell are pals. I think it's when I first met both of them, they were tabling at Comica, and I bought a couple of things off them. Really, really interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah a great style. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lock your doors and bolt your windows, because Dave Kennedy sent us a one as well, uh, at Terry <laughs> Sheriff. He said, I always loved Accident Man for that, and Bisley on Judgment on Gotham. Um, yeah, Bisley's uh, obviously a name that you've got to mention as well. When you talk yeah, about Painted yeah. Star, Simon Davis and Bisley. Yeah, Bisley was just a juggernaut when I was when I was a kid. You know, they talk about a style that you will recognise anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna be hated by everyone to say when Bisley started in 2000 AD. That's when I didn't enjoy it as much because everyone tried to replicate his painted style. Oh, I can yeah. See that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so it um, wasn't because of him; it was everyone trying. Not necessarily. To... I, I, do you know what? I, I would read a Ballard, Ballard and Elliot, Dave, Mc, or um, Mike McMahon slain long before I would read a Bisley slain. I'm afraid, yeah. but um, it wasn't just him. But there's so many people decided. Like it's, it was such an explosion of people loving that that comic. Yeah, that, um, but a lot of people ate the style, and, and we and 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 some of them weren't were less messy. Some of them weren't as great. You know. Yeah, um, but uh, I, I miss the the black and white, the, the you know, like like Ballard and Ellie and yeah, you know, Dave Gibbons stuff that was in there, very sort of you know, traditional British comics. Yeah, it certainly mm. was a sort of sea change, wasn't there? When when Bisley yeah. sort of exploded, he literally exploded onto the scene, really. Yeah, yeah. Can he? Can he's, someone ring him and ask him to show Pineapple Story, by the way, please? Oh, okay. oh yeah, he's still working on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's an amazing painter, though. My favourite mm. Simon Bisley stuff is the run he did of Doom Patrol covers. Ah, oh, yes. The, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he is. He's 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 a spectacular artist. So like, he, uh, you know full of himself but he's a he's an amazing yeah. artist he did uh, those shit the dog comics remember them yes you'll always just bring up something like that butcher and i love it <laughs> <laughs> Drag it uh john late uh, mentioned bias but some of uh grant richard's work up for a yeah, wave was incredible yep. can't i can't agree more with that um yeah uh, both friends of the show yeah. But he says several pieces weren't used, and each one was a work of art. Yeah, and congratulations that's... to Grant for passing his Kickstarter as well. I'll be, I'm looking forward to seeing that sketchbook. Yeah, that's all, dude. Yeah, 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 very much so. Yeah, do you think that people? Do you, um, what do you think, Sarah? Do you think we're missing that experiment edge that we had with Vertigo and some some stuff like Kirby and stuff these days? Would you like to see more of it? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, like purely selfishly, that's that's my wheelhouse. I I love it when people you know, sort of push the, uh, you know, push, push the envelope a little bit. I mean, any type of experimental design, it doesn't have to be painting, mixed media, whatever. I mean, like, who was the guy who did um, Catwoman? J.H. Williams, the third, fourth, fifth, whatever his number was. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, sort of, he did, you know, like, he, he experimented with, like, panel design and stuff. He did Promethea as well, didn't he? And, like, sort yeah, of, yeah. so although his actual artwork is your traditional painting and king coloring you know sort of like sort of the, the you know he he experimented with with the way everything was presented so much i, yeah. I just love seeing something a little bit different i guess yeah. And, yeah. and where people don't think that they've got to tell stories in you know in the in the same old same old way i mean like there's a lot of good comics coming out nowadays on from marvel and dc but they don't look very exciting they're yeah. often telling really, you know, often telling sufficiently good stories that I'm really into it. And the art's very good and very nice and clear and good to look at and tells the story well. But, yeah, I would like to see people 
just you know with a slightly different style sometimes i mean they're the, they're the comics that i tend to really respond to like yeah. i don't know if any of you read uh, mountain head the first issue came out yeah. on boom like this month and um oh god what's the guy's name it's, it's something ryan lee ryan lee okay. is the artist yeah. and his style is so different from anything i've seen for a long while that I mean, the story was great too. Like you know, so luckily, I mean, it's an all-round great comic. So, but but the the art really, you know, spoke to me because it's so different from anything I've seen. And it's you know, as time goes on, it's more difficult to yeah be different, isn't it? You know, because you know, like all everything's already been done. You know, like it's, it's but whenever I see something that you know just doesn't look run-of-the-mill yeah. house style, but that's where it speaks to companies me. like Marvel. Do you remember Marvel's graphic novel? line you know so i think it started with the death of captain marvel and you had super boxes and um you had i think um hooky with spider-man and you know, which was mute which was mooth and stuff like that they were producing you know graphic novels that they could take a chance on there was stuff in them that was you know epic epic magazine for example is the best example of that i think from marvel yes. you know there, there yeah. was some real experiments going on in that and um yeah i've got i've got quite a few of those i mean often they go off to like more to the you know, fantasy art, don't Look, they? Yeah, they're very sort of heavy metal, but then again, heavy, heavy metal. metal was, yeah. Yeah, heavy metal. And, and I don't really like that sort of stuff as much, but no, there's there's certainly a lot of interesting stuff in, in those old epic magazines, mm. definitely. And, and as you say, those things that they bought straight to graphic novel, before, you know, without releasing yeah. them monthly or whatever, they, they did take a bit more of a... Yeah, yeah. Of a and even, even if you look at... I, know, I don't know. I don't know how everyone's... successful they were. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but Ronin experimented with format and stuff. Mm. You know, you had the fold-out yeah. pages and, had, you know, the real sort of... Yeah. Back then, we hadn't really seen manga, and it was like a new thing for us. And I remember being totally entranced by that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But people don't always respond well to it, do they? I mean, like, even when yeah. Sukovic did the Demon Bear stuff, you know, people hated oh, no, it, didn't they? Because it, yeah. it, didn't, it didn't look like normal Bob, comics. Well, Bob Whereas McLeod, if you look at the style... Look like, normal comics I'm, I'm more infested the style change was too profound there i think bob mcleod oh, okay. to sinkovich was a was it was a, just a huge <laughs> leap you know it really was <laughs> they, they went from being like almost like a, a comic that could be given we would probably describe it as an all ages comic to being yeah. this like just whacked out you know <laughs> yeah yeah and another name that came up and i know I always learn with every show anyway. Uh, Jenny Robbins, at Jenny Robbins, um, she said, I came here to say David Mack. Also, Linda Barry. Um, does yeah, that name ring a bell? Yeah, man, I, I can't picture her at the moment. I have to look it up while oh, we're talking. shame on us. Uh, that, that's yeah. another one to look up. And yeah. who else was there? There was someone else. Oh, no, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah, because obviously um, the name was brought up by Dave Crane, Baron Story and Kent Williams. Um, mm -hmm. And I know, Sarah, you said you, you were going to talk about them. yeah. I was going to, I mean, I was basically going to say with Baron Story that everybody we've mentioned owes a debt to Baron Story because without him, there'd be no Sid Kevich and there'd be no Dave McKean and there'd okay. be you know, anybody. Baron Story was the original. I mean, if you look, if you, you know, if you Google his art, you'll immediately see Sid Kevich and McKean in it. Uh, but, he right. was, but he first, you know, he wasn't working in comics. He's an illustrator. He did a load of book covers, stuff like that. You know, he he wasn't a comic artist, but he was the artist that they all saw and have all acknowledged, you know, in various interviews and stuff as being their primary influence. And he is spectacular. And he did the only comic work that I'm aware of, because I looked it up earlier to see if he ever has done anything in comics, was he did one of the stories in the... Um, in the Sandman Endless Nights collection. I don't know if okay. any of you... Oh, right. Yeah. You know, it's the, it was the book where each of the seven Endless got their own story. So Death got a story, Despair got a story. So he did Despair, who's like, you know, the little the little fat, ugly lady. Um, <laughs> or did I ever tell you? Sorry, I'm going to go off on a tangent. You know, <laughs> like they do cosplay group. You know, they do cosplay groups. Yeah. I was what? once approached... Like because people were putting together an endless group and they had all six, but they didn't have anybody to play despair. Who's the little ugly woman with the manky teeth who's like <laughs> naked with huge, like her boobs are like hitting the floor because they're so saggy. And they're like, oh, we thought it'd suit you. So I told her to fuck her uh, f off. Okay. Anyway, so yes, yeah. so, um, we'll get him, so, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so Baron's story does the despair right. story in this endless nights. And it is so out there and so amazing that, like, straight after it is a Sienkiewicz story. And Sienkiewicz is, you know, 
trying his best, bless him, but he looks pedestrian compared to the story that came before him. Oh my god! Because Barry's so... story is just so. If, so ever, if ever there's a recommendation for you, that it's that I sort know. of line, isn't it? <laughs> So, yeah, I've looked all... up. I've looked up Mary. Yeah. Um, I've looked up um, Linda Barry, by the way, and it's, she was. She's got a really underground style. I knew the name, but I don't think I've read much by her. But um, yeah, it's a real, a real sort of. Some of it's done on like lined paper. Some of it's done in biro. Some of it's done with bits stuck on it and coloured. You know, and it almost looks like some of it's done in crayon and stuff like that. But oh, um, yeah, I see. What you mean it's a bit like that? Um, what was that? My my something something yes. is mum. That's exactly <laughs> is monsters or it was. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, the one I was thinking of. My favourite yeah. thing is monsters. That's yeah, it. it's been which like I've that, never read yet. It? You told me off for not having oh, read. It's, it's great. It's yeah. well worth reading. But yeah, so Baron's story basically looking look into him. He's he's amazing, but he is he's the name that always comes up when all these other artists that we're talking about are talking about Ooh. who they're influenced. And there yeah, you go. Yeah. If you learn nothing else from this episode, there's um I think that's the perfect sort of segue to move on isn't it really I, I think we um, yeah. went off on that one didn't we yeah yeah that's I mean I to, to end on the one that started <laughs> yeah, it all almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well yeah. I mean we, we could talk for days and days and obviously Sarah's proved that she's a she's an alright guest so she can't get out of uh, not coming back now yep um, <laughs> just, she's going to be a regular uh, Matt Strott before uh, we mentioned a few of the other people that got in touch so Matt Strott said doesn't get much better than Sonny Lou's The Art of Charlie Chan Hock Chai have you God, seen yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yes. that's, yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I didn't think of that, but yeah, because it, yeah. it's it's kind of more cartoony. Yeah, yeah he said, I'm not sure I can even classify it as a comic, but it's still an amazing there. example yeah. of mixing media. So, of course, yeah. the other one is yeah. um, Zap Comics. You know, the underground comic scene was a mess of just do what you like, wasn't it? Biro yeah. drawings, text pieces, yeah. and photo stories, and that was that was and, a real mixed bag. And the resurgence of zines. Like yeah. zines, are, yeah. zines are very, you get a lot of, you know, sort of collage stuck together stuff, you know, like sort of, you know, all like little drawings and text pieces all sort of ripped out and Good. glued yeah. on and, you know, so uh, with, you know, with line drawings thrown in. So it's, I've I've always responded to that sort of, it, it's the energy of it, you see, that's yeah, what I like thing. about, yeah. about, about yeah. sort of stuff. I love like sort of looking at something that looks that like when somebody put that together, they were like in a frenzy. You know, mm. they were so excited and so enthusiastic, and and that's what I get from sort of things like McKean and Sinkevich is that it looks like they were sort of you know in some sort of artistic, you know, sort of fugue state <laughs> that they were working, and I love it. Yeah, yeah, I think I think we've proved that it's not all art school confidential. That the scene in that movie where the geezer is naked, <laughs> yeah. covered in blue paint, and just throws himself at a canvas. I like to think we've proved that isn't what we're looking at. You know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But we, but we definitely, um, we're always open to seeing more and more sort of, especially original artwork and mixed media and stuff like that in the comics yeah. we read. I know certainly we're we're blown away with um, what you guys out there can do, whether it be with actual physical media or digital or, or however you make your comics. Mm. And if you know what? Always experiment. Always yeah. be up for experiment. Yeah. I love to see it. You know. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And uh, and uh, we've loved this conversation. So I knew this was going to be a fun one this week. So. Uh, but I've got to keep the train on the tracks. So have we got any <laughs> shout outs this I've week? I've got Jess? a few actually. Yeah, we've got we got a few this week. Uh, and we've yes. got a few recommendations as well. So let's yeah. uh yeah, go on, take it away, Tony. Um a little shout out for Susie Gander, who's just sent me yeah. a rather saucy picture. Not a photograph, Ooh. I'd like to add. A drawing. <laughs> um it's of a lady naked handcuffed to a bed. There's a, there's a hint it may be in a future issue of something. But the um oh. I did actually ask if Chris had posed for it, but apparently She's not answering that question. Yeah, no, but we um, love we love them both. Yeah, yeah, it's a big shout, lady, Susie. Does the lady have a ginger beard? No. <laughs> well, I can't <laughs> covering it up. Oh, we'll see what you mean. Right. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> Tony. Yeah, see what you're saying. See what you're saying. Rusty top down cellar. That's what they say in it. <laughs> Never heard that expression. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus H Christ. Just go on. Move on. Next. Uh, yeah. Next is uh, Gustavo Vargas. One of my favourite creators. I, I managed to be the first person to order his sketchbook, and he included a sketch in it as well, which is pretty nice. Nice. Um, yeah, it's, it, look up Gustavo. So it's G U S T A double F O V A R G A S Gustavo Vargas dot Big Cartel dot com. Uh, he does some great stuff. Really, really big fan of his. Um, also got contacted by Ladies Do Comics, 
they're running a professional development workshops and this is a project they are running to help them raise money for their graphic novel prize this year the workshops include uh, such people as hannah berry carrie fransman and simone Lear. if you go to www.ldcomics.com ladies do comics so ldcomics.com it's running between the 12th of october and the 2nd of november and you can book your tickets through eventbrite so if you go to their website you'll find a way and um as you all know i work with rachel um rachel ball love her stuff yeah and um, we're doing hopefully gonna do something in the next issue together and she's she's a cracking crate and if you want to get some advice from someone i would suggest she's a great person to go to there you go that's all my shout good shout nice yeah and uh, speaking, uh, Hannah Berry is also going to be at Leamington Comic Con. Oh yeah. yes, yeah, um, uh, which Let's is taking it. place. Dan, you've got some of the. Uh, yes, yeah, this. Uh, well, when you listen to the show on the Monday, it'll be on Saturday, the fifth of October. Yes. Uh, yes, ten till five, Parish Church, Leamington Spa. Uh, we have to click a, a link in the, the show notes, and yeah. you can buy tickets on the door or online. Yeah, it's going to be a great day. It's the same venue we were at last time, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, that was a great venue, and there's going to be loads of great guests. And me and Dan are going to be repping the podcast table there. The ACP, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, we're going to have uh, all four issues of Awesome Comics, which we didn't have last year, did we? We didn't have the whole no. set. So if you haven't got the comic yet, uh, drop by, come see us, talk some comics, buy some comics. Uh, ours will be the one where there'll be two blokes probably looking gormless won't we Dan <laughs> that's what we do best yeah um, and probably like drawing and doing some artwork as well we'll have yeah. some artwork and other goodies for you so, but but drop by um, we'll... plenty of photographs boys I want photographs sent to me oh, oh, I'll, I'll be missing you yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well you'll get them um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll find out whether you wanted them or not afterwards um, <laughs> but we will also we're going to try and get some audio on the day as well because like we say there's some great guests there and sometimes there's great creators that turn up at these conventions and we end up interviewing them as they as they happen to be at our table so you never yeah, know nice. what you get so in ne- next week's show obviously we're recording it a bit early because tony's off and uh you know and we've got the convention and stuff so we're recording it early so hopefully touch wood well not hopefully we're gonna do it dan we're gonna get some interviews aren't we yes yeah so next week's show will be a, a bit of comic talk and some audio and stuff like that so uh, yeah all good fun um but yeah that's lemmington uh, also on the, the 19th of October a couple of weeks later uh, Saturday the 19th of October in Nottingham Conference Centre is Nottingham Comic Convention uh, yeah. one, of, one of our fave shows we, we like to visit every year um, tons of, of great exhibitors and guests there um, we're going to be there as well Tony you're going as well aren't you, you, you yeah can't. yeah baby yeah, I'm, I've got the no brow table there yeah nice. yeah so, so there's all kinds I mean I could list off um, loads of creators and stuff but there's a great exhibitor page not even the, the actual website definitely check out the website because that's a good example of like you know much like thought bubble as well um you know having all the creators all lined up and you know, clicking through to because i like to sometimes when you go to a convention make a small almost a mental shopping list of the tables you because you, you can't visit every table at a convention of course you can't but yeah. it's good it's good to pick out some new names so definitely go to nottingham comic uk because the guy, we love Kev and the, and the guys from Nottingham Comic Con. Yeah, sure, we do. They're it, great. It, yeah, and get a, a copy day. of the anthology because it raises money for some good charities. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, there are, like there's a couple of us that got bits in the anthology as well. Yeah. Yeah. Even um, me, it, even, even I did something a little bit different. All three of us have done something, haven't we? Mm. Have you done thing for it, Sarah? No. no. <laughs> Thank you for your concise <laughs> answer. But I am I am going to to the Comic Con. So uh, you know I'm I'm going to represent myself there in person rather than in on paper <laughs> very good yeah good. yeah we understand what you mean good very good yes the, uh, <laughs> good just, i'm glad you do <laughs> can i just also say in the, if we're doing the convention calendar yeah. i'm i've just booked tickets and i'm going to be wandering the aisles at lycaf at the lakes um comic festival on the 11th 12th and 13th yeah so if you see me come say oh, i'll try and wear the t-shirt yeah um i'm not i'm not tabling i just thought i'll have a fancy going up to that because it's a beautiful part of the country yeah. and uh, i was chatting to ian and nicole about it um, and I'm also at MCM with no brows. So the 24th through to the uh, 25th through to the 27th of October at the Excel Centre, we've got a table there as well. So please come by and have a chat with me. Yeah. I'm sure I'll be going and if you if you see Tony uh, at, at the Lakes, or likewise if you if you come up to the Awesome Pod table at Nottingham, and you say, <clears throat> "Have you got any of that special stuff?" 
Yeah. Then they will be under the table um, in a dirty brown paper bag. There will be copies of, of Tony's comic, <laughs> The Whore Chronicles, which, um, you know, keeping in the vein and the spirit of the whole thing, we're selling it under the counter. And I want, I want Joe just to roll her eyes and go, filth. <laughs> she really likes the book, man. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. So, yeah if you want a copy of that book which you should because you know we've talked about some of the artwork here but to actually see it printed is is lovely as well it's, it's come out really nice so you want a printed copy of this um go and go and get it from tony at the lakes or us at nottingham or yeah, thought bubble as well yeah we, we'll talk if more any, if there's any no brow stuff you want as well i'll have it with me at the lakes so i won't be yeah. tabling but if there's yeah. anything particular that you'd rather just get yeah. handed to you rather than get posted then give yeah, me a shout yeah. we yeah. will be talking more about obviously we, that's three conventions in a row for October and Tony and Tony and Sarah oh, are off yeah. to New York for another one um, obviously one of the big ones of the year is Thought Bubble we're, we're going to be talking properly about that in a few weeks but we're not going to say yeah, anything right now but yeah we're doing a, we're yeah, going to yeah. do a little bit of a focus so it's stay about time tuned. with Thought Bubble as well we love it we go to it yeah. every year and it's good yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they're a great country, bunch of guys so it's going to be good to talk to them so um, any other shout outs Sarah, have you got any? Oh, no, that's one thing I didn't think of in advance. Oh, I've got a no. shout-out. Mr. Hello, Cucumber. Hello, Mr. Oh, Cliff, yes. Cliff Cumber. Sarah's actually be, now joined her first ever WhatsApp group, which is me, yes. her and Cliff, which you're quite excited yeah. about, weren't you? I was, because I didn't realise that, that people's names come up in different colours, and I thought that was really cool. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you just wait till you start getting sent, sent the sort of pictures that me and Dan get on a regular basis. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, we do send them as well, Vince. Hey, we well, do send a few choice ones. Yeah, you know, yeah. as you do. <laughs> anyway, from the shout outs to the recommendations, um, who wants uh, who wants to go first? You it's, it's... Be, and you, why don't you go first? You can yeah. book in. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah um, I didn't read many comics earlier in the week, but I made up for it this weekend with um, going through some of the comic comicsology. Um, sort of selections that I got this week. Obviously, um, picked up Out of Darkness, which is my favourite title anyway. But um, but there was two that I was very much interested in, and one I'm going to start off with a uh, one from Vault Comics. I don't think I've okay. recommended a Vault comic um, on here before, but I know uh, they've been mentioned quite a few times. They put a great work, yeah. don't they? They're really up and coming. They're really um, gaining some sort of popularity again because they had that little dip, didn't they, where they got a bit of bad publicity about payment to creators. But I think they've overcome it and they sort of apologised and they're putting out some. Again, some experimental stuff, which is really interesting. I know Ram V's done a few, isn't he? He was on the show before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is that um, the Savage Shores? Yes. That's, yeah, that's, that's yeah, an yeah. amazing book in itself. Yeah. Um, but the one I want to talk about is uh, written by Tim Daniel and Michael Marisi. I hope I've said that. Yes, Marici, isn't it? Marici. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, art by Josh, Joshua Hickson, Hickson coloured by Jordan Boyd, and the cover by Joshua Hickson. Um, this one I was hearing a lot about, and knowing my love of horror, this definitely sort of tick the box this is the plot number one i've been this is one of the books i've been looking forward to for a long time um because it just looks right at my wheelhouse it doesn't look like shock sort of horror that's just gore and this is atmospheric stuff um, right. basically when chase blaine's a strange brother and sister-in-law are murdered he becomes guardian to Mackenzie and zach the niece and nephew he hardly knows seeking stability for the children chase moves his newly formed family to his ancestral home in cape augusta which overlooks a deep black bogland teeming with family secrets um this is great <laughs> it's just fucking awesome <laughs> this book um it very much the pacing is just spot on i haven't um read anything by my uh michael or, or tim before i've heard tim, what's tim daniel done before i've heard that name so much what yeah he's quite, quite a busy uh, artist isn't he? yeah um yeah. but this I mean, it says on the back of the book, you've got a lovely sort of disturbing image uh, of a sort of character rising up from a bogland and they're sort of crying out, but there's loads of vines and stuff sort of growing. It's almost like a swamp thing, like image. It's really weird how the organic is sort of mixing with a haunted, haunted person. And on the back it said, in order to receive, first you must give, which alone is a little bit, a little bit scary. <laughs> Especially if you're in prison. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. I did think about that as well. That made me laugh when I was <laughs> reading it. Um, but yeah, th this is um, this is spectacular. I'm I'm on for the long haul on this one. I think it will also make a fantastic trade. But I think this is one I'm gonna, you know, I've been looking for that, you know, 
that sort of horror ongoing horror tale to sort of scratch that itch um obviously i was i was reading harrow county and stuff like that and this this yeah this fits into that sort of vein as well but it's very much a character piece there's no it's very creepy and disturbing there's um the house itself i think when you're you're doing a story that involves not a haunted house as such but a creepy looking house the house has to look the business and i must say uh, joshua's work on it is really brilliant i've come to appreciate because i'm trying to work more on like backgrounds and details now as well whenever i look at a panel and I'm, I'm looking at just the amount of work that's gone into it even though sometimes it could be a couple of lines that just gets across um what you're trying to tell and like he's got vehicles he's got houses he's got swamps he's got everything he's got um like crowd scenes um it's a wonderful character piece that really sort of builds up and there is a if you like your monsters is this isn't like a haunted house either there's something pretty horrific and monster like going on um and the first issue is very much a mystery um there's a splash of violence which i didn't expect um there's family secrets going on i think <laughs> i would like to say oh i know this is where this is going because you've got the the guy who's looking after his niece and his nephew and so i think you've got your three major characters there and you see right. how that sort of develops but i'm not quite sure it leaves it on such a it, it gets stuck right in the fact as soon as the family are in the house weird stuff starts happening and it leaves on a bit of a cliffhanger so yeah if you if you like your horror to sort of unnerve you um not smash you over the head with you know just obvious stuff th- this is and it also if you like uh, the stuff like the haunting a hill house on netflix if that's the kind of you know creepy character horror you know things will only creep you out if you care about the characters and and yeah. this book does it it builds the first issue is building up really interesting fantastic characters that already i'm invested in um and i can't tell you if they go live or not plus the covers are badass the the, the the second issue cover um is an amazing creepy print I, I don't know if you've seen it it's like a it seems to be a, a figure look a face looking up from like what looks like a black sort of oily lake and there's loads of fingers coming out of the lake to cover up the, the figure's face and the, it's just oh it's beautiful stuff beautiful stuff so the plot is de- is definitely a recommendation um i'm on board f- for this one I, i've i've been hearing a lot about it on online all over so it's nice to sort of yeah you know the, the hype is real people the hype is real yeah, i must stop by their table actually i expect they'll have a table at new york it'd be nice to stop by and see some stuff yeah 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 and, I, and if the... i wear my t-shirt i might get a discount <laughs> is that, is it, just just in general wherever you go like mcdonald's and things like that yep yeah um yeah so the plot number one is definitely an, an issue one that is is worth checking out so whether you buy it in because vault are, are readily available in a lot of comic shops as well aren't they yeah yeah they're they're, they're pretty distributed right by a diamond now aren't they yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so okay. goodness especially if you like i know a lot of fuss was made over like things like witches by scott snyder and stuff like that. The, the real uh up the, the uptick in creepy horror in comics um is has really been good to see and it's character horror as well so that the plot is is going to sit amongst them and hopefully it continues to creep me out so yeah. brilliant there you go Very that's, nice. that's my first one sold cool. <clears throat> sarah would you like to go okay okay i've got two but one's really quick so should i just do them both yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. okay all right so the quick one um it's only because it's been recommended before but a long time ago because i remember nick brokenshire mentioned this when he was on Whenever that was, that was like, a couple of years ago. Two, That's when he two, put some two years ago or something. He put a picture of himself with his pants on his head afterwards. Do you remember? Just to show. <laughs> no, oh, good days. I do yeah. remember. Ha- yeah. I've I've still got that up on my wall. Yeah, so it's, uh, <laughs> I haven't really. I'm joking. Anyway, but yeah, he recommended this, and I'm going to recommend this just in the in the spirit of what we've been discussing. Stray Toasters, 1991, oh, four yes. issue, four issue oh. miniseries, Sinkevich. It's it's utterly mental it's harsh it's not an easy read because it's basically about a serial killer who's mutilating kiddies so that's not a nice thing and then the detective who's looking for him is mentally ill himself and so you get lots of hallucinatory hallucinatory stuff and but i'm recommending it because it's just a peak example of mixed media and comic books and it's yeah. very best i isn't can't there, think of anything um, an unfinished final so. issue isn't there or something you're thinking of big numbers Buzz. I am sorry, mate. Yeah, I am. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That's the one yeah, that they yeah, put those... the they put the photocopies out of, didn't they? 
Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. No, you're yeah. thinking of big numbers. No, no. Straight Toasters was complete. Is four issues. That's 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 all it all it was and all it was supposed to be. It's in um, print still. I don't I, know whether you get it. Would you? No, is it? it isn't. And so I checked. I checked yeah. to see how people could get it. You can get it on eBay. The four issues for about twenty quid. So it's it's that's not you bad. know it's it's, okay. it's it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. bad, but it is. It's to, it's Sinkevich totally off his meds. Totally unfettered. <laughs> Absolutely utter utter genius, and I'd recommend it to anybody. So if yeah, they if too. you know if people stuff. have listened to this and they're thinking, oh, I wonder what this mixed media stuff's all about. That's that's the book you pick up to it's, find out what this. It's so mixed media evocative stuff's about. of a period of my life in the. So I suppose early nineties yeah. was it? I suppose back then. Yeah, nineteen ninety one. Yeah, you know? and yeah. it's so evocative of that aesthetic of the time of just rebellion and punk and that sort of new punk yeah. thing going on. You, you, we had deadline to follow that, and we had you know everyone was like really trying hard and experimenting with stuff. And yeah, yeah, no, I've got exactly. really great memories of that book. I must reread that. You, I'm going to buy it. You made me. I'm going to buy it. I don't know where my issues are. I'm going to buy it again when I get to New York. Yeah, good shout. Cool. Yeah. Everybody should do the same. Um, yeah. And yeah, so my proper recommendation, uh, something a bit more current, because I thought I can't send everybody off to eBay to buy old stuff. Um, so from <laughs> from from Image, um, and it's not long started. It's on issue two, so you know it's still, you know, you can get in and pick it up. Um, Coffin Bound, writer Dan Watters, Watters, and the arts by Danny Strips. Remember her? You all yeah. met her in the, the 2018. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but she doesn't call herself Danny Strips anymore, so she's obviously stopped stripping. She's just called Danny now. On the, uh, on the, I had to just stop calling Danny. myself Tony Strips. That's yeah. One phrase. yeah, but that was named that was after fun. Chicken Strips, though. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Colours by Brad Simpson and letters by uh, Aditya Bidikar, who I remember meeting at yeah. Thought Bubble last year, and he was very nice. Yeah. Um, he's the guy who did all the Black Crown lettering. Um, oh, that, he, that's why it rings a bell so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a really inventive letterer. I mean, it's, it, in this title as well, he, he he does some really interesting things with lettering that I haven't seen before. I, I like his style. Yeah. Anyway, this comic, um, I've, I, I saw it described as an acid-drenched grindhouse road trip, and I really can't think of a way to sum it up more succinctly than that. Um, yeah. I, th- from memory, the actual sort of like solicit just said something like, guns, entropy explosions or something anyway but it's better than that sounds um the story is basically this there's the the, the is the heroine is uh, the like lead lady is a lady called izzy um she is i mean it's it's set in like sort of it's not even a sort of a future dystopian it's obviously a slightly you know like different reality to ours there's some weird weird shit going on She's just found out that she's had a death sent, like you know, sort of a contract taken out on her by this uh, thing called the Earth Eater, um, um, and um, she's basically trying to outrun it and trying to sort of undo her life. So she's trying to go back through her life, re- um, sort of removing all traces of herself, because she said, "If I'm not going to be in this Earth, it can have nothing of me." So I'm going to remove all traces of myself. So she's like retreading her steps. Um, but I mean, like, I'm not I'm not describing it very well because it is just an absolute trip of a comic. It's it's mental that it, she's followed around by this character. The character design on, on him is amazing. He's just called the Vulture. He's basically kind of robotic, but his head is like a vulture's skull in a rusty bird cage. And he's wearing this big old sort of like brown great coat and like sort of old army boots. And he's very funny. He's a very witty character. And she's just like, you know, like she's why why are you here? Why are you following me? And he's like, because you know, you 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 know, I've 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 followed dead people, and you're you're going to be dead soon. So he's he's kind of like latched onto her, and she sort of runs into some old boyfriends and finds out that it was an old boyfriend who actually took out this contract on her when he was like high off his face and now he totally regrets it and he's trying to take the contract back but you can't uh, so we've all like, done that though Sarah do you know what I mean <laughs> exactly <laughs> have we all, yeah and then she ends up in this strip club where this stripper's like stripping and then takes off her skin a bit like you remember the uh, Robbie Robbie Williams rock DJ no, video. Jesus, yeah. no, no. <laughs> so so like she strips off her clothes but then keeps going so she strips off her face and rips off her skin and oh honestly it's it's I, I've no idea where it's going it's mental but I love every second of it it's it's it's, it's well written it's funny 
the story's great, all the character designs are great. Danny's art is spectacular. It's got a bit of a bit of the Paul Pope about it. Ooh, nice. um, it's that yeah. sort of style. It's like, again, like I was saying, I like to see something that looks a little bit different from every other comic that's out there, and it looks a little bit different from, you know, sort of what, you know, sort of most of the comics that are out there. It's beautifully done. I mean, beautifully rendered. Um, she's 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 a clever girl um you know like, and and the the lead character the female character is beautiful beautiful almost enough to turn me she's like <laughs> <laughs> there's your pull quote there's your pull quote Sarah. <laughs> the only bad thing about it is i, I tend to read a lot of comics at, at ice hockey in the break and i was reading this in the break and there's a load of kids sat behind me i turn a page and there's this like full-on very graphic sex scene and i'm like oops boys don't look at that don't look at that <laughs> that's why i don't read razzle on the tube <laughs> exactly. well i wasn't expecting it this was issue two there, there wasn't anything quite that rude in issue one um but no honestly I, ca I can't recommend it highly enough um you know story dialogue is 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 crackling the art's beautiful character design's great the world design is great. It's even got an orange Volkswagen Beetle in it, which was my first car, so that was nice. Um, yeah, it's great. Buy it, read it, go. Okay. Nice. Go. Not bad. Who wants to go next? D Me? Yeah. Go. I've got a bit of a strange one. Uh, I saw it on uh, Reddit. I often pop onto the like the comic stuff on Reddit. And How do you some... spell that? <laughs> you know, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> So this one's called the the Met metaphysical Mister Fister, and oh. it's done in like the style of a sort of uh, an old 1950s 60s comic. But there's a real kind of uh, uh, yeah old. Uh, it's hard to describe the, the, the what sort of angle they're going for. But essentially every page they're trying to go for uh, like put it on newsprint stuff. Uh, and I can't really tell you too much about what the story's about because it's fucking mental. <laughs> It starts off with kind of like a, a comedian. It looks like it's set in the 60s, 70s, and she's talking about uh, a set doing a, a jokes. And then it cuts back into sort of a caveman time, and a caveman rapes a cavewoman. And oh, then yeah. there's, those, there's a storm, and uh, it's just absolutely crazy. And it jumps back to present day with this, the, the uh, comedian sort of telling her story, uh, to finish up the joke, and then in a bar. And then this guy, kind of a bit of a weirdo, starts talking to her. And then he he appears to be some sort of like uh, cosmic god, and yeah, that's about as much as I got got from it. And it's, it finishes up with next issue, Mister Fister, uh, the minister, strapping because it's gonna get weird. I mean, it is fucking weird from the get go. It's really. Kind <laughs> well, I think of... I think McKee says that in story, doesn't he? Always include a caveman rape in the first yeah. page of your story. <laughs> I think, I, I, one thing I was very very pleased to see was the next minute when you flash back to the caveman he's getting his comeuppance big time yes. so yeah so he he doesn't he doesn't stay mr smug rapist for very long which no is good. no no yeah he gets he, he gets his comeuppance and that's a terrible oh, yeah. mr man book that one mr smug rapist I'll, I'll send these this uh, you've seen this comic sarah i mean what did you take away from this because it was just like uh, i finished I it thought... and i was like what I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, he's he, he's clearly sort of, he's got his, well, superhero character kind of like you know the guy with the, the sort of the F on the front, and, and you know yeah. you see him in, like in the sort of the caveman figures, don't you? So obviously that character's been around since prehistoric times, and yeah. it's kind of so I think this is just setting up for he's obviously going to go further with it next time. But I don't know if you looked at the guy's website, this Jeffrey Crouchek or however you pronounce his name. But it's really, really appropriate that you picked him because he he does beautiful mixed media paintings ah, all over his okay. website. So all right. speaking this comic, um, he's done now, this. Yeah, since exactly. we made it, since we made it cool. Common, common as it. But he's got yeah. this great sort of series of paintings that look like um like body ba bodies are like a body farm. You know those things where they leave the bodies out to just like decompose and stuff in America, um like for scientific research and stuff. Uh, I don't know about them. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'll, I'll uh, is that what Reddit's about? Is that what Reddit has on it? I don't understand. No, uh, Reddit's just a forum where people talk about everything. Oh. Yeah, it's basically yeah. a subreddit for everything you can oh, find. Okay, yeah. pretty much everything. Yeah. I must get on this Reddit thing. Yeah, but on his website, if people go to his website, the whole comic is on the website. Yes, like you can just 
could just read it there so you, people can read it for free and see what they That's see what the they future. make of it but i i think i think it has promise I yeah, I liked uh, it. It definitely. I, I didn't. I haven't read it properly. I only looked at the first couple of pages, but it's definitely got a real underground style to it, which I really I found appealing. I've got to tell you. Yeah, that's the words I was trying to claw out of my brain. It comes across <laughs> as a real kind of like underground comics of an ex. There's like an anti-establishment, like, you know, yeah. anarchistic sort of style to it, which I kind of I'm drawn to with that sort of stuff. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Especially with the cover, because it's kind of it's kind of got like a uh, what do you think an atypical like nineteen. 19- 50s cleaner than clean kind of superhero yeah like a job kind of turn superhero yeah kind of thing. yeah yeah uh, but even that plays one. slightly with your senses doesn't it even that's like not quite right isn't it there's no. something you sense something weird is going on behind the doors of that one there yeah, yeah. so oh, we'll nice. uh, put the link up for that in the show notes and you can <laughs> uh set me straight on what you think it's about <laughs> <laughs> i love it when he does that yeah <laughs> <laughs> Tony, what's your one this week? Uh, mine. Uh, now, I chose this carefully. So mine comes from Gareth Brooks, who's um, an old table mate of mine um, and, an, uh, and he, a past guest. Gareth's on the show, wasn't he, years ago. Yeah, he does stuff. And he loves to play with format and style, Gareth. I often think he just makes a rod for his own back. What was that <laughs> comic where he, he drew it and then he coloured it all in black and then he had to rub the black out and it was just like, oh, my God, just draw something, Gareth. Do you know what I mean? But he's done... He's a, <laughs> It's, he does he does come up with some really genius stuff um and his award-winning book the black project everyone should read um which is a comic that was embroidered as we were talking about earlier and threadbare which is the book i'm going to talk about here is a return to that style has anyone read either of these two books no, no. I've, read the, I've read the i haven't read threadbare yet but i've i've got everything else he's done yeah, he's yeah. great. He did a, a few things. He did Man, Man and Woman, Woman when we used to have a table. And there was just like stick figures that were just like hilarious incidents of like real people, but drawn as stick figures. And then he did Excuse Me, Can I Use Your Toilet? Which was about loads of sort of different workmen and the silly conversations they had, which is sort of a very real thing. But Threadbare is this embroidery style. Um, <clears throat> to sew a comic is quite something. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, can't, I can't sew my jeans up when I split them. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I can't do anything like that. So this is quite a, quite a letale. I wish you'd stop. do your jeans up more often. You don't. <laughs> and, uh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and it, this, the book starts as it sucks you in with this sort of, you think it's going to be um, an autobiographical thing. So get this, he's actually sewn the notes page from a smartphone. Um, and the, even along the top, you've got 3G, you've got the time, you've got 72% on the battery, you've got notes, and he's got a to-do list. And I won't read the whole thing out, but it does include things like get drunk with B, don't buy a greasy sausage roll from the pasty shop, and ignore the man watching pornography on his iPad. Yeah. Um, so he's sitting on he's 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 sitting on a um, he's sitting on a train. And then he's basically two pages later because there's there's um there's a lot of space to these pages. I'll talk about in a minute. But this the fourth page is um. Well, the third page is he hears a phrase. He overhears a phrase in the train carriage. And he overhears a woman saying, the last time I was in love, question mark. And he puts a tweet out and he's sewed the tweet. He's embroidered the whole tweet and the and the people who've replied to it. So I can hear two elderly ladies on the train talking very candidly and movingly about the last time they're in love. I hope my pen doesn't run out. And um, so he overhears this conversation between these two women. Um, and... It starts off, the woman says it must have been 1992, and it leads on from there. Um, and it's two women um, who are basically describing in very sort of personal terms about the last time they were in love and, and how it affected them. And it's, it's a beautiful book, man. It's just really emotional. Um, and he he adds what I can only guess is the real dialogue between these two women, um, which is sewn on to quite scant and bare pages so one page might only have two word balloons sort of sewn into it but it's so poignant it's so touching that it just it doesn't matter it, i mean it's a, it's a reasonably quick read but what he does do is after a few pages you get um a counterpoint you get um you don't what i suspect get is the two women you get a woman undressing pulling her trousers down and and the threads of the embroiderer sort of swirling round her and um 
she's becoming unraveled in the image as it's being pulled apart and it's a view of the front of the image and the back of the image so for those that embroider i'm obviously a very popular embroiderer the back of the <laughs> image is a is a sort of slightly messier version of the front is yeah. that right is that right sarah that's you, right. That yeah. is correct so you get the the front and the back of these images and um he sort of it's like a photograph or a, you know I imagine a photograph or a scanned in image of it um and it gets um in, in a way impressionistic you get a man as well and the man is um looking down at his genitals and um um ejaculating the thread out from himself you oh know God. and it swirls around the air around him and stuff like this and, you know yeah it's proper you know adult stuff but then again it should be um and it's just so beautifully paced and it's just atmospheric and there's a real um texture and counterpoint and the the image bec image is becoming increasingly more complicated and increasingly impressionistic and there's um real time um sexual positions between men and women and against that so there's a man having sex with a woman she's laying down he's he's sort of behind her and then just there's just a speech balloon at the bottom of the page that says well there's not much more to tell and it, the, the images counterpoint the, the dialogue in a really sort of a really really amazing way um and there's a real bareness and a somber bleakness to the pages and an interweaving is and i say that in a literal sense as well as a sort of figurative sense of the images and the words as they come out of the mouths of these two women against the images that are that he's sewn into the page um it's a genuinely very moving experience to read this, and I think it's something that everyone should invest in. It's done um, American comic size um, with a cardstock cover and interior. It's very like our comic V, Sarah. You know, it's like that sort of oh, nice. feel to it, that, mm. that weight yeah. to it, you know. Um, and it, there's a, one of the most final things they say is one of the women says, do you ever think about how your life might have been different? Um, and the other woman says, every day. And it's just it's just little catches of that. It's, it clearly is stuff that he's overheard and he's made a note of and he's turned into this like nice comic. He doesn't name anyone. You don't, you don't know who they are or where he's traveling to or from or anything like that. But uh, it's well worth picking up. Gareth does a lot of co um, conventions. I suspect he's probably at Thought Bubble. Yeah. On the myriad, he's often on the Myriad table with them. If you go to www.gbrooks, so it's B-R-O-O-K-E-S, so gbrooks.com, or if you follow him on Twitter, Gar at, at brooks underscore Gareth. Um, he's a funny guy as well. He, he does some deeply thought out comics, but when you meet him, he's, he's a chuckle. Do you know what I mean? He's a, he's a good, he's good company. I saw him at LCAF and we did have a laugh. Um, yeah, that's my one. There you go. Nice. Nice one. So I'll sign off with uh, my second one. Quite rare for me to have two. Um, <laughs> but this, okay, for this one, let's set the scene. What do a conflicted bride, her dysfunctional family, a gang of Elvis themed crooks and one relentless sheriff have in common? Wow, it's it's the new book from Action Lab uh, called "Going to the Chapel," issue one. <laughs> they uh, do some nuts. Books, and this is this they? is I part like of the that. Action Lab danger zone. And the danger this is basically Action Lab normally do all ages, but they've they got like a sub part called Danger Zone, which is for the more grown up books. Yeah, that's uh, some of the stuff I was reading, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now this this is written by an apologies if i made the names uh david Paposi is the writer art by gavin guidry uh colors by elizabeth kramer lettering by ariana mayer with colin bell and the covers by lisa still manhouse and gavin gavin guidry i've probably got that completely i've murdered all their names and i apologize <laughs> for it because this book is fucking awesome <laughs> um it's basically it's an action comedy. It's a crime caper sort of action comedy about a, a gang of robbers who, instead of like robbing a bank or you know wherever, they're hitting a wedding. It's a wedding of, of someone from a, quite a well-to-do family um, who's going to be wearing quite an expensive uh, necklace around their neck for the. It says chapel in the sort of in the middle of nowhere. You know, I can kill Bill. There is a chapel in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, and uh, th this girl um, named Emily, she's going to um, be wearing a necklace which is being publicised on the news. You know, cause she's the daughter of a rich, uh, like a billionaire, uh, like a tycoon, and the necklace is going to be worth around two hundred fifty million dollars. It's one of those gems everywhere sort of thing. So the bad Elvis gang are going to rob it. <laughs> 
they, um, which I thought was quite a good idea, like a, a gang robbing a wedding instead of like a, a normal sort of like bank robbery situation. And uh, but things aren't as they seem, and it's quite it was, it's a dysfunctional wedding anyway, because Emily isn't sure if she wants to go up the aisle in the first place. So you've got great sort of character building and sort of comedic moments throughout. Um, it is initially it's the first issue, so it's a setup issue, and the, the pacing of it is just sublime. It's the sort of pacing that I I want to do with the sort of comics I I make. Um, there's Elvis sort of lyrics going throughout, especially when the bad Elvis gang turn up. There's a, an amazing page that is just someone reloading a shotgun, and then you see the bad Elvis gang. They're all dressed in sort of like these sort of maroon tuxes, but you know like um. Point Break, you know, as the Dead Presidents, they've all got like yeah. those masks. They've all they're all wearing bad Elvis masks, the bad Elvis gang. So and they're all walking along with shotguns in hand against this sort of desert background. And I, I absolutely adore that page. It's just badass. And then it just cuts. It literally cuts to black. There's like two pages of like the the credits. So it feels very cinematic going forward. And then it cuts to four hours earlier, and you see the character sort of stuff before and how the bride's she's nervous. Does she want to go through with it? Um, there's an amazing <laughs> moment where she asks there's a, like a grandma sitting there she's got like a breathing uh, tube in her nose and she's got a cigarette in her other hand so that tells you what that sort of character is like and she says grandma Harriet do you have any advice for the wedding yeah monogamy is overrated always have a <laughs> always have a side piece ready I learned that in Nam. <laughs> <laughs> it's already and so she's like okay right you know so immediately you've got those sort of characters going through it um she's got the dysfunctional family you've got the the groom to be um there's a story with him there's lots of things to discover there there is there is mystery i think things are going to develop as the story goes along uh and it's all building up to when um the gang sort of hit the wedding and things sort of kick off um because the police are called and um it, the, the issue ends you, you have to read it for yourselves to just to see the sort of storytelling I don't want to ruin too much but there's a sheriff there's a badass sheriff you can already tell he's going to be a badass because he's got one hell of a moustache um, <laughs> but the, the gang are there trying to uh, get what they need to do and it, it's all going swimmingly and then the chapel is sort of surrounded by cops and you, you know the, the artwork's brilliant as well the way it's all paced out and you know the, the, there's a panel of there's no sound effects or anything but it's a panel of like the chapel from above as like ambulances and cop cars are just surrounding it and you, you the smoke billing billing out from the cars it's it's phenomenal stuff um and the last the last panel is a sheriff you just looking badass and he goes that's right you dipshits get ready for a good old fashioned ass kicking and I just thought fuck me where's issue 2 where <laughs> issue 2 this is going to kick off I think there's only going to be 3 issues of this alright um, I'd like to get I like their books you don't yeah. see enough of them physically do you You tend to have to read them on yeah. comicsology. yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. Action Lab started as a digital only sort of company I don't right. know how many of them yeah I was reading their Puppet Master stuff do you remember it's really good yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but this this is phenomenal it's great stuff it, it's you know, I, I I like in my head. It's like a movie that probably, if someone adapted this as a movie, it's not going to be as satisfying as the comic because the to- the comic's doing everything right. Yeah. You know, um, there's twists and turns in the first issue, which already set you up for the next few issues. Um, it's digital. It was I only paid like one forty nine for it, um, and and you get a lot of bang for your buck. And you know, it's it's a quick read but an enjoyable read. I've already read it a couple of times because it was just it was just fun to read. So. Yeah, going to the chapel number one is definitely on on my list. I'm going to keep going through the series. I mean, with this sort of story, it's clearly just a mini series. <laughs> yeah, you know? but yeah. it's That's it's right, a hostage it? situation during a wedding, so you know. And it, it seems it's got it's nailed the tone. I think with these sort of stories, it's all about the tone. It's there's, it's not grim. It's not a grim and gritty crime story, which we're seeing lots of. Um, the cover itself already sets it up because the bride is holding a pump action shotgun on the cover. That's an awesome cover as well. Um, so it's well worth checking out because you know it, there, are, there were two polar op- opposites. The plot and going to the chapel were like opposite ends of the spectrum, but both of them had exactly what I like in comics, which is great character work that that hooks you in and get keeps you going for the next issue. So yeah, definitely definitely check out if if you I've been I've been to a lot of weddings where I've hoped there's going to be a lot of bloodshed to yeah. be fair. Yeah. And I'm that bored. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, I th- I d- I'm the thing is that with this story, I'm not sure it's one of those. God, there's going to be carnage and dead bodies everywhere, but it's already set the stakes. You know, you've already got everything set up for. You know, it's not going to be. It's not a Tarantino sort of action action comedy. It's uh, something uh, something a bit more. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Best way to say it is just get the comic, folks, because it was really go. brilliant. So <laughs> yeah, congrats to everyone involved in it, because I was this is another one I heard a few good things about on social media and I'm glad I, I checked it out so sometimes the hype is real as I've said before and, <laughs> really uh, but yeah and sometimes an episode goes quite well and this is one of those yeah, it's episodes been really that, well yeah yeah I'm yeah, really pleased yeah, yeah yeah it's been good fun this week thank you for joining us Sarah you've been an absolute star yeah no problem Cheers, Sarah. Yeah. what are you doing in about a month we just have you back every month Sarah I think it's good <laughs> yeah yeah so, ba- basically right. to, yeah to keep, keep I'm done the others in place I've, I've, I've... I've fulfilled my obligations. Oh, uh, you can go back Stop on the back Alpha no, no. flight. Go back on the Alpha flight one. Go on. Go yeah. with you. Go on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you really should listen to that episode anyway, because that's a great show. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. So we hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, learnt a bit. Um, I've learnt the, certainly um, learned a couple of names that I, I'm definitely going to be checking out more than mm. work. Um, that's what's lovely when you get someone like Sarah who, who knows their salt on the show. Because the um, I mean, it's a shame because I've got to make even more show notes and links that I need to do on the actual page. But Sorry, and, you, and you've got a spell Sinkevich, which is always fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I might put um, as uh, Simon Russell said, stinky bits. I might put. Yes, it <laughs> I've you, written so. it so many times that now my iPad recognises the word, which I'm like, oh, few. I don't have to keep yeah. looking up. Oh, who did that book? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. and if you if you do want Tony to stop showing out showing off about this gangster life he's leading then there's several <laughs> different ways you can get in touch with us you can email us awesomecomicspod at gmail.com likewise if there's any events or anything coming up it's going to be a busy few weeks but because we're talking about these events there might be some like exhibitions or like different gallery you know or any kind of comic workshop or whatever going on in your area yeah, yeah, yeah let us know and we'll put a shout out on the show and probably you know we'll retweet you etc as, as well yeah. and uh yeah we'll retweet you via at the awesome pod so follow us on there uh well we'll put you out we're recording early so we're not going to put out any questions for the ne- for the next one um but we will probably be you know i've I, i've sorted out the password and given the keys back to these two maniacs so uh but <laughs> dan's looking after it i'm gonna be well. i'm gonna be talking rock the god on the next one. Oh, nice one hold oh, on nice. to your hats yeah, yeah. nice yeah. And uh, yeah, if you do the book of faces, go to facebook.com slash awesome comics podcast. Likewise, if you just want to chat comics and continue this discussion, then join the Facebook group Awesome Comics Talk. Um, I think there's going to be plenty of discussion this week about lots of different stuff that we've talked about. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah, join that group because that's always fantastic and a great community of people. We don't have really much to do with it. We just occasionally post things. And it's everyone else that makes it great. Yeah. Uh, thank you for listening to us, whether it's on the website awesomecomics.podbean.com. If you listen to us on iTunes, subscribe, leave a review. just helps get the net, the word out about great comics. and great. We've got another comics. one this week. Oh, do we? Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Uh, you know, we haven't had one for a while, so I stopped looking. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but th- thank you to anyone who um, shares the good word about this show. And we've had a bit of an uptake in uh, listeners recently, so thank you very much for that. Um and if you listen to us on any of the networks, like I don't know, maybe you listen to us on Spotify or or maybe Stitcher, Podnose, Podknife. What other networks are we on, Tony? We're also on the now dirty, infl- infamous Pod Rusty Birdcage. <laughs> don't encourage which I, which I wrote down after Sarah don't. said it because it made me it sounded dirty. <laughs> That's pretty day. I, I yeah. brought you onto the show, Sarah, to say you would stop encouraging him. I didn't think you'd. you'd... Sorry. <laughs> you that was before we even start recording. I was describing a character in a comic who's got a rusty birdcage on his head. Yeah, say it again. Say it again. No, I'm gonna, no. I'm, I'm, when my phone bleeps, it's going to say Sarah saying rusty birdcage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but where can people find us online, etc.? Tony. Never on anything dot blogspot dot com or and big SAS and big cartel because I've now got a brand and it's S A S E Z O H Y Z. There you go. Lovely. Dan. You can find me on Twitter at Vanguard Comic and you can read Vanguard at VanguardComic dot com. Yes. He's back in the game, aren't you, Dan? I start speeding it up once again. I've been seeing some of your sketches and there was one of them I mean, because I thought, oh, you know, lots of heroic deeds etc but there was one sketch that looked like someone beating up someone carrying a child yeah 
Oh, right. Well, that's all right. Then I just want to make yeah. sure that's what it was. <laughs> oh, another one of those. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we cleared that up. Uh, <laughs> but seriously, folks, check out Vanguard because it's the best web comic Thank out you. there. Yeah. Um, you can find out more about my stuff at the Red Mouse from Mars dot com and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jester Diablo, which I'm uh, I'm I'm posting a bit more on both after a bit of a, a bit of a gap from social media. So doing a bit more artwork etc and mm. sarah thank you again for joining us and now you are officially in the game of making comics and you can't avoid it um <laughs> where can people find you and your fantastic work etc um i am on twitter at implausible 17 and i do have an instagram which i average about one and a half posts a year on um <laughs> So feel average. free to go. I know. Well, yeah. no, I, it's you know it's slightly more than one a year, but not quite yeah. up to two. Um, so yeah, and that's the lost dogs art. But yeah, don't bother going there because I never post on it. Point but you should, I, I think uh, you know your work is tailor made for posting on Instagram and stuff. I would, I would it's not. Think. It's not square. It's, it's the wrong shape. Oh, and and you, and you don't believe in a crop? No. No, I did. I did. I did post two things on my Instagram this week, actually. So I brought my average right up because I'm doing my I'm doing my little book about astronauts, and I've posted two pictures of that because I was quite pleased with that. So, um, so yeah, look at me. I'm an Instagram sort of influencer. Yeah. Oh now. my god, that's the most hipster thing <laughs> I've ever start, heard on this show. People will start oh, Sarah, it was like, going so well. Like, yeah, no, I'm not. Nobody's there, ever sent me anything free. There it's is fine. one thing we will not have on this show, and we've got it on the board of Awesome Towers. The word, If you mention the word influencer, we will, <laughs> we will not have you back. Oh, see, I should have said it right at the start. I could have <laughs> saved myself to Har- if you Harris the influencer sounds like a Kirby villain. <laughs> yeah, And what a brilliant influence she is on us this week. So thank you very much for listening, folks. <laughs> Go forth, read loads of uh, comics, um, experiment with the work that you're doing, and, uh, yeah, mix up some different things. Who knows what will happen? And, uh, yeah, we'll read it anyway, because we'll read anything, because we love comics. So thank you very much for listening from Dan, Tony, Sarah, and myself. Have a brilliant week. And Sarah, what, are, what should yes. they do? Oh, good God, really? You yeah. can make me do this. Yeah, bully like this. I'm not going. Totally uh, oh right, okay, okay. I'm not going to get any blame for this. Right, okay. Dan, what do they do? Stay awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye, everyone. See ya. Bye. Bye. I might, I might, I might go on X Factor with my harmonica playing. <laughs> I think you have to sing, don't yeah. you? Do you? The other one. Britain's you could Got go Talent. On that one, the talent one. Yeah, you could go on that. I knew that was going to go. happen. Him and his fucking bum harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to do it with a fart one day, aren't I? See if I can do it. You can never. No, a fart's not going to work in it. Surely it won't. What if I rammed it right up my arse? It would hurt. Well, there's the uh, closer to tonight's show. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can get that working.